Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of Northampton, December 19, 2013. Our final uh, council meeting for this term. Um, I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'll be presiding. The, uh, we start these meetings before we convene uh, by opening up public comment and invite people to come and speak on any topic but not for any length of time. Um, there's three minutes uh, allocated for you to speak. Um, you should understand that the council is uh, not allowed to respond, so um, please address your remarks accordingly. And um, we'll start with, I actually don't have the list. <laughs> so. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the microphone's not on? Okay. And Mary, when you when you turn on, can you pass it to Mike <laughs> Nagy? Because he's the first one up. So. And when you speak, could you identify yourself and give us your address? Yeah, I should pick you up from there, Mike. <laughs> Uh, Take it away, Michael. Um, I'm Mike Nagy, uh, 20 Hampton Avenue, uh, number 208 in Ward 4. I did look at our new website at Northampton.gov. It is definitely an improvement over its predecessor. Downtown Northampton is recognized on our new website or it's great restaurants, great music, great stage performances, and great art. I would also like to see Northampton be able to be recognized for its great accessibility for visitors and residents alike. The Disability Commission has been out front of this. Uh, we've worked with the Business Improvement District and city government to get menus written in Braille and in large print into downtown restaurants. It may already be in the works, but how about displaying a small sign uh, in a standard color and standard size, like five by seven inches, done by the city or the BID or even the Disability uh, Commission announcing the accessible menus availability. More push button door openers everywhere downtown would benefit parents with strollers and small children and shoppers carrying packages, as well as people with disabilities. I'm also very interested in having portable wheelchair ramps for one step up businesses available. The fact that I use a wheelchair for mobility should not prohibit me from taking part in all that Northampton has to offer. So in conclusion, it would be wonderful to be able to add great accessibility to those things that Northampton is recognized for. Thank you, Michael. Next up um, is Fran Volkman. I'm Fran Volkman, 40 Arlington Street, and I've come to respectfully request that you table the proposal from the CPC to move forward with a design for the new development of the Park. The reasons for this request have to do with good or best practices and transparency in city government. There are at least two major interest groups that have an investment in how Pulaski Park is developed. Members of one group believe that the park is an integral part of the larger development of what we loosely call the roundhouse lot. They are deeply concerned that separating the park from the rest of the project 
will severely limit our options for the much larger and arguably more important development. Members of the other group believe that the park is a standalone matter, and since we now have the opportunity to use CPA funds to improve it, we should go ahead and do so. All of us here know that both of these interests exist, and that both are held by people who are dedicated to the good of the city. Yet the council is on the verge of voting to support the interests of one side without giving the other side a clear voice in the matter. Recall two recent situations that have some resemblance to this one the Bean Allard Farm Development and the Hilton Garden Inn Development. With Bean Allard, the CPC received a proposal from one interest group but knew that other interest groups were concerned. We set up a process. The council was very active in it. They brought everyone to the table and faced squarely the issues related to the land's development. That process was cited far and near as a model of best practices and transparency in government. Not everyone got what they wanted but everyone felt listened to and taken seriously. With the Hilton Garden Inn, there was no invitation to the public to participate in the discussion before the major decisions were made. The result of bad process was widespread anger and division and a loss of trust that has even now not been forgotten. Just this past October, a public meeting was held to begin a discussion of the development of the roundhouse lot. The room was packed and much hope was expressed at this time that we would take best practices seriously. <coughs> Did the CPC know about that meeting when they received this separate Pulaski Park proposal? The proposal, in fact, had already been made when that meeting was held. Did they know that there was another major group out there with an interest in this project? I'm guessing that they and you were simply assured by the proposals that this wasn't an issue. It is an issue. And now is the time for some real leadership on the part of the council. Table this proposal, call a well-advertised public meeting explicitly to discuss what should be the relationship between the development of the park and the roundhouse project. Bring all sides to the table. Not everyone will get what they want, but they will have been heard honestly and openly. Best practices will have been observed. If the decision to move ahead with the park independently of the roundhouse is made, then only a short time will have been lost. But if you push the park forward without the proper process, you will have opened an old wound, rekindled a lack of trust that everyone has been trying so hard to overcome, and perhaps closed out options for the most important development in the city for decades to come. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Johnson. Thank you, Bill, for the opportunity. I would uh, like to come here. I'm John Sinton, 124 Willow Street in Florence, uh, to support what Fran has said. Uh, what we have here is a once in a 350 year chance to put back together this, these two pieces of the property. Um, uh, I would like you, if nothing else, at this point in time, to begin the process of talking about the roundhouse, of opening up that discussion. As you move along with Pulaski Park, open up that discussion now about the roundhouse. And in order to understand the relationship between the two, just take a walk. Go on out at the other end of Pulaski Park and begin to imagine, as I have and I have with other people, begin to imagine what is out there, how, how the two connect to each other, where the Mill River used to run, down at the bottom there. This is an extraordinary historic chance that we've got. And I urge you to put these two pieces together both in your mind, in the vision, and in the process that the city is going to take in planning. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, that's all we have signed up. Is anyone else interested in speaking at this time? <coughs> well, uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll and we will convene. Here. Here. Present. Here. 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 Um, given the fact that most of the people in this audience are here for one event and one event only, I, I think it's rather than punish them <laughs> by making them endure what we're paid a lot of money to endure. 
Um, if we could, if, if I would beg the council's indulgence and move up the DPW Employee of the Year item to this point. Is that yes. okay with that? Yes, that's fine. Let's hit it. Okay. Uh, Jim. Good evening, counselors. It's a great evening for me because any night I can stand up in a microphone and have an audience and talk about how terrific Public Works employees are. It's a great night for me. So uh, thanks for moving me up. And uh, we do have a few folks here from Public Works tonight to honor this year's uh, Employee of the Year. As uh, the counselors may recall, every year the Public Works uh, goes through a nominating process where supervisors and coworkers alike nominate uh, workers within the de department and then there's sort of a sifting process of the nominations and we arrive uh, very difficult to pick one person every year it's a very difficult thing this year we're here to honor uh, Charlene O'Donnell um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Charlene and we have a little plaque here um, to be presented I think by you and the mayor I guess so we can get some pictures yeah, the mayor of, uh, uh, the mayor's he's the presenter I'll I'll get in a picture, though. I'll photo. <laughs> Excellent. I'm not up on the process. But, um, I am up on the work that Charlene has done for the Water Department. Um, if you were to call the Water Department at 587-1097, you would hear someone say, Water Department, how may I help you? And I think that would be Charlene. And that's, uh, I think, very indicative of the way she approaches her job every day. How may I help you? whether it's uh, a customer calling with a question or a fellow employee uh, looking for some assistance or anyone else that comes in contact with Charlene, she wants to know, how may I help you? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Charlene's work as a principal clerk in the water division and uh, a couple of other things just about Charlene as a person. Um, normally, I would sift through. We had all these nominated nomination papers. and. A lot of the people here uh, nominated Charlene uh, to be the Employee of the Year, and normally I would sift through them and digest it and give you something a little less choppy and maybe a little more sleek, but I'm not going to do that tonight. What I did this afternoon when I went through them is I just pulled out a bunch of comments that coworkers and supervisors alike have made uh, in regards to Charlene. So she processes utility billing and assists the water superintendent in dealing with customers and contractors. She handles complex billing issues. She has excellent phone skills with customers. She is very patient and courteous. She has a positive attitude and is quick to offer help to coworkers. She's dependable, hardworking, and exceptionally helpful, extremely knowledgeable about city operations. She's, she has the highest professional attitude. She's caring and thoughtful with coworkers and customers. She motivates and inspires cooperation of her coworkers. She has an amazing work ethic and ability to manage multiple tasks. She's an incredible asset. She arrives early every day to make sure that the meter readers are ready to start their work when they arrive at 7. She does everything. She is so deserving. She is the rock that anchors the water division every day. She pays attention to detail, ensuring things are in order. Now, I, when I was reading these, it's just Actually, you know, I work there every day, but it's quite moving to see coworkers and people that come into contact with Charlene every day uh, to have these thoughts about her. Um, she's the unofficial public works pastry chef. <laughs> she gives us candy and keeps people from going crazy. <laughs> a very, very important talent. She's a great cook and brings me lunch. <laughs> Beef barley soup today. She has a great sense of humor, and she loves to laugh. She's one of the biggest assets that the city has. Um, so I think that'll give you a sort of an overview of uh, how important Charlene has been to the Public Works Department in the Water Division the last few years. She's been a, a city employee since 2001. Um, she'll be retiring shortly, so it's um, it's really an honor to be here tonight and. Uh, and, uh, and let the council know that Charlene O'Donnell is the Public Works uh, Employee of the Year.
Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Charlene, you want to say? Do you want to say anything? Do you, uh, in in your beautiful phone voice? Every every employee in the Department of Public Works deserves one of these. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to echo what uh, Jim Larilla said. I uh, speak with Charlene constantly. She's probably tired of hearing me call her as a contractor. As a matter of fact, it was just uh, last Friday was the last time we spoke, I think, about a particular project. Always bright and cheery, and she has never failed to have an answer for me. So, and I thank you very much for everything you do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Th <laughs> I, I, isn't that fun? Just to be the center of attention at Betty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You should get it all emblazoned on something, and, it, and it's on TV now, so you can get a tape of it and play it over and over for them as a loop if you want. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if you're really going to come. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Charlene. Thank you. Um, so now we go back to the the regular order of business. And actually, if you guys if you guys want to leave, be my guest. We'll give you some time to get out of the room to clear the room here. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are welcome to stay. However, you be very excited. No cookies. So the mayor is here. Um, he's ready. And he's ready. So, Your Honor. Good evening, Councillors. Uh, I um, had one communication this evening, uh, and it was relative to just making a quick presentation to you publicly uh, regarding the city's new website, uh, which we um, launched officially. Uh, uh, some may say bravely, on Friday the 13th uh, last week um, at 12 noon. Um, as some of you know, uh, uh, technology has been an issue that we've been working on quite a bit um, in my administration over the first two years. Um, and I had come to you early on uh, for um, seeking the ability to reprogram some money that we had previously invested in hardware uh, that we were no longer going to need because of some, uh, some upgrades to um, cloud-based technology and so working with our uh, web and IT advisory committee we took a look and really identified the website as really sort of the the most pressing thing that we could work on as a committee um, and so uh, took a look at the the old site which you may recall the uh, maroon site that was launched in 2005 which had served the city well um, has a lot had a lot of information on it um, was not as easy to, um, or intuitive to navigate around um, and was actually not, uh, from the employee side, was not very easy in terms of putting information on it, getting, pushing information out to uh, residents. So um, we looked around at uh, other um, uh, websites. Uh, actually, Lynn Simmons did an extensive amount of research for the committee, um, looking at websites, looking at vendors. Um, we ended up, uh, after multiple presentations, selecting Civic Plus uh, to work with on this project. They, are, um, they were among a number of uh, state-approved website vendors and had a, a, an excellent track record, not only across the country, but actually here in Massachusetts, here locally in the Pioneer Valley. So, um, so what you see is the newly revamped site, and you can see that one of the, one of the big changes is that the entire home page kind of fits on one page um, as opposed to the previous one that required you to scroll and scroll and scroll to get to a lot of the information. We reworked the colors. Uh, not sure how well it comes out on this screen, but we obviously tried to incorporate the blue and gold of, uh, of uh, Northampton High School. Um, we also tried to incorporate uh, downtown Northampton as well as downtown Florence uh, to give it that feel. We put a call out to, to residents to send us in photographs, uh, which we've in started incorporating some of them into this slideshow, um, and we'll continue to add them. Um, uh, we have a search function, which the prior site did not have an integrated search function built into it, um, right there front and center. Um, and then we've created these big subheadings at the top uh, 
to try to send people to uh, what they're looking for. So obviously city government, and you can see when you hover over these, uh, these, sub, these, these subheadings, you get these big pop-up menus, which are great. City, so city government, basically you have access to everything from city council to mayor, every department, every board, every commission. Um, living, we've got access uh, for information for people who just want to find out information relative to living in Northampton, everything from um, you know, how to sign up for trash and recycling, how to sign up for utilities, uh, uh, figuring out about local hospitals, farmers markets, et cetera. Put a big emphasis on visit visitation and tourism. We've got links to people uh, for people that are visiting Northampton so they can take advantage of, uh, of arts and culture and entertainment, parking information, et cetera. Um, doing business, we've put a lot of our economic d uh, development resources front and center for people that want to uh, do business in Northampton and, and access uh, Terry Masterson and our economic development department. Um, how do I is just kind of a, an all-purpose, I have a question about doing something, whether it's applying for a building permit, uh, 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 registering to vote, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and we're going to be adding things to that. Um, the other nice thing, uh, you know, social media was also not really prevalent uh, back in uh, 2005. So we've got quick links uh, with the familiar buttons to Facebook, to Twitter, to YouTube, uh, the one blog we have in the city, the DPW blog. Um, so people who want to connect to us uh, via social media can instantly do that. Um, the calendar, which is uh, a, an important uh, function to the work that we do in city government. Um, this is a major upgrade in terms, especially in terms of our compliance with open meeting law. Um, it really gives us a, a kind of a real time way for agendas to be uploaded, meeting notices to be uploaded by departments and committees to go right on the calendar. Um, and you can see that we've got uh, an, a number of public meetings that are listed. Um, so if we click on tonight's uh, city council meeting, if I can make this little guy work to an Apple mouse, so it was going to, what do you do there? Press it down twice. It's a double click. Try it. Yeah. That's yeah. It. The track or the, uh, so the website's broken. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, <I think> <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm really not used to using a PC. Um, it's, the, it's the lower one, right? Yeah. 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 That's what I'm, I'm used to just. Yeah. Uh, I'm used to the hand gestures. <laughs> yeah. This is better than the healthcare right, rollout. So this is <laughs> so there it is. Sorry, it just took a little bit there. So you can see it takes you right to the meeting. Um, you've got information about location. You can map it. Uh, you've got the the agenda you can download right here. And the calendar function actually is fully searchable, downloadable to your own calendar. You can search by week, by day, by month. You can search by you know planning board meetings for the next ten years, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, you can search it. Um, uh, so, I just want to see if I can get it to go. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, um, so that's the calendar. We've also got an events calendar, et cetera. So that's, and we've already heard from staff just how much easier it is now, and for the city clerk to be able to to upload meeting agendas and and put things on the city calendar. It's much more intuitive, um, and it'll be much more accessible for residents. We've also got these great modules over here to the uh, to the left. Um, again to make it easier for residents to communicate with city government. We've got the um, make a request module, which basically we have a series of online uh, requests that you can fill out. So if you want to contact the DPW about a pothole or about a tree limb, or you want to contact parking division about a parking meter that's deficient, uh, you can do that. And you can send it online and get a response and have it be tracked by the department online. Um, We've also got the Notify Me app uh, widget here, which is, you may remember, we used to have a series of email lists that you could sign up for. Uh, well, the Notify Me is similar to that. You register on the site, and then you can basically go uh, down a long list of alerts that you can choose to be notified of. Everything from you want to know about um, if there's a new job listing in the school department, um, if you want to know about, um, if you want to know about, uh, uh, the agenda for the tree committee, if you want to know about, uh, you know, an RFP for pavement, you know, whatever it is, you can sign up to receive customized alerts for any of the uh, information that we're pushing out on the city website. Uh, you can get it um, by signing up for that particular module. Um, the other uh, feature, and a lot of this is uh, 
customizable is that residents can actually create accounts on the website. Looks like I may have gotten signed out. Um, I, was, I was signed in originally, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. But you can actually sign in, uh, create a personal profile on the website, and you've got this My Dashboard feature, um, uh, which basically allows you to set up the website to look the way you want it to look. You can create, if you're somebody who's always looking at the calendar, who, or who always wants to go check out uh, you know, the RFP section, you can rearrange the desktop to be personalized to how you want to view the city website. Um, we've also got the pay online feature, so you can do all of the, oops, I think, well, I think now you really lost me. Uh, oh, it's back. Uh, see, it's asking me to sign in, but that's okay, I'm not gonna. So there's a way you can actually sign in. I have a password that allows you to actually sign into the website um, and be able to create um, a profile that allows you then to customize the site for, the, for what you want to do on it. We've also got um, an online HR module, uh, which uh, allows you to go and look, and look at what job postings are available um, uh, currently in city government. Um, we've also got a bids and RFPs module, which allows you to be able to look at what bids and RFPs are open. And you can apply online now. We have online forms that you can fill out online and submit online. And a, a lot of our uh, paper forms that you used to either have to print a copy of or print a Word document of are now online, so you can actually fill them out online and push submit and send them in. Um, so we've really tried to make it uh, more accessible. You'll notice, and this was not staged, but we're in a snow emergency right now. We have a limited parking ban. We've got an integrated emergency alert uh, system so that when the city declares one of these snow emergencies or water emergencies or whatever, it automatically pushes that to the website. So you can see, you can get information about what the current alert is. It also pushes those alerts to Facebook, to Twitter automatically for us. Um, and so again, just another way to, to, to integrate the things that we're doing in our emergency dispatch service with the website and communicate with people. So, um, you know, we feel that it's a, a really um, important step forward for the city in terms of being able to not only provide information to residents, to visitors, to businesses, but also uh, create a way for people to be able to easily access information, communicate uh, with, uh, with city government. Each department has uh, web pages with full um, email lists. Uh, so you can go ahead and contact people within each department. We've got FAQs on a lot of the web, on a lot of the departmental pages with frequently asked questions. Uh, you can see here, this is the building commissioner's site. Um, you've got access to, you know, phone, email. Uh, you've got uh, quick links to things that people might be looking for in the building uh, commissioner's department. Um, so that's the website uh, we, we've gotten a lot of good feedback and we're actually getting a lot of great suggestions for things that we've at we can add and we've been slowly adding them as they come along I obviously want to thank the the members of the web and IT committee who, who uh, advised us on this I again thank Lynn Simmons in my office who was sort of the the project leader for this um, Vanessa Kendo and her staff in HR who uh, in MIS rather um, who worked through all the technical issues, and then all the city employees who had to undergo training. Uh, we, ha we had the folks from Civic Plus come in. We set up sort of a training lab in the uh, hearing room, uh, and, uh, and folks were trained on how to use the interface. Uh, and then they went back to their departments to, to, to go ahead and, and work on creating their own web pages. So big effort, uh, long overdue, and, uh, and we really appreciate the support of the council um, in, in making this happen, because I know you share, uh, you know, my concerns about making sure we, you know, make city government as accessible to people via the web um, as possible. So I would ask, answer any questions that people have about it. What happened case. to your picture? What's that? What happened to your picture? My picture. It's on the old one. It's on the mayor. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. But it's not on the homepage. He's the yeah. It's not on the homepage. He's in the was mayor's greeting. What's welcome? that? Was that your call? Uh, yeah, I didn't want my picture on there. There's a, there is a mayor's <laughs> welcome, mayor's which welcome. many yeah. of the sites we looked at. So if you, if you do click on the mayor's welcome, yeah, there's, right there. There's, there you go. Welcome to the city. Where's the mayor's welcome? Yeah. I don't see but that. It's not, but right off the homepage, though. It's not on the homepage. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, we don't want to okay. scare I'm people away. So, so yeah, so that's, that's the site. And, uh, 
the and again, are there any questions people have about it? How, how are you doing with the migration of information from the last site? Uh, you have a variety of different same types same of sites and files. That yeah. One of the other nice features about this, um, they uh, it, before we t we, t we we had to use a lot of third-party uh, solutions, and this uh, this website and web design has a lot of that integrated. So, uh, you know, for example, today we received a, a disk in the mail that had like a you know 23 megabyte file on it, uh, you know, PDF uh, file, with lots of photos. Before we would have to take that to James in the planning office, and he would have to. Um, upload it to like a third party program that uh, would then compress it enough and then we'd load it to a file cabinet program and then you'd have to access it that way. This has a document center integrated into it. So we basically put the, put the CD in and, and uploaded it right to the website. They are also hosting the site for us. We, we had, a, we had a, a, again, a third party that was hosting the site versus the actual uh, company that, that had designed the site. They do all of that now. Um, and, you know, it's going to, people are having to go back through their old um, files and migrate them into these new document centers. Um, but I think when it's, when it's finished, it'll be, you know, easy for people to search, easy for people to be able to pull up documents uh, quickly and, and find them quickly. So, so far there haven't been any uh, major glitches. We still have the ability to convert some of our forms to online forms, um, and we're working on that. So. Um, the only other feature I'd point out is there's a feature called Community Voice, which is another one that I think is unique and I, and I think obviously fitting for Northampton. It's, a, it's basically a, a community forum of sorts where people who, can, who log into the website um, can put, compose ideas, can put ideas on the site um, and have discussions among, uh, among residents uh, with, you know, people can vote on ideas. There's sort of a little forum that's set up for talking about ideas related to the city. And obviously city officials can participate, can take some of those ideas and, and figure out if they're ones that we can implement. Um, so that's another kind of unique feature that we try to, we really wanted to make the site, um, you know, a place that people could go get information, but also share information with the city as well. Councilor Freeman Dane. Thank you. Uh, I actually got a um, call about the Civic Plus um, I understand that you can sign up on the website to get updates regarding um, board meetings and so on. Yes. Meetings and, so on. Mm -hmm. and you give your email address to, to the website, but it's hosted by Civic Plus and it's got like a Civic Plus address. Who does Civic Plus, what's the relationship between the city and Civic Plus other than as vendor provi and, and provider? I'm also the host. Yep. Do they have um, privacy protections totally. regarding email. I, so, could you yeah. talk a little bit about that, please? Most definitely. The, you know, this is they're they're the, they're the host, and so they are uh, they are hosting and managing the whole web um, system I mean, and the whole email system. And so, uh, people who do sign up uh, will be getting those emails through this Civic Plus um, server. But again, it's all part of our contractual package with them. It's they're not sharing emails with anyone else. They're not. They're they're segregated for just use for the city of Northampton. Um, I know people have gotten people who signed up for text messages got some messages, but those were really more about making sure you had an adequate plan. For those are confirmation messages asking yeah. you. Just letting you know that if you're going to get text messages that you can be charged you if you don't have to. You. Some people signed up for texting and got a text talking about possible charges, and they thought the city was charging it. What, what Civic Plus was just telling them, be careful, you may have a plan that will charge you, you know, $1.50 for every character you get or something. Their, their text was minimalist and uh, yeah. could be confusing. Yeah, exactly. The, my question, my question is, I understand Civic Plus is providing the service. Yep. I just want to make sure that they have, I just, I'm curious, I, I just want to make sure that there's protections in place for people who give their email to this company, that the emails won't get sold, the emails definitely. are theirs to manage. Yes, definitely we have those protections. That's part of their contract with us. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about the contract, particularly relative to support? Costs going forward. Yeah, um, uh, you know, 
24-7 uh, customer support, obviously the, all the, the very robust training uh, pro program that they had. They're, they have within the Civic Plus community, they call it, of users, they even have a forum for um, users of Civic Plus, Plus websites where people put ideas about making improvements or creating new widgets or creating new modules. And they, um, when they make those kinds of upgrades, those are included, you know, it's sort of like, you know, like a iOS software that receives an update. You get that as part of You get of the, the update package. without additional cost. Exactly. Okay. Um, and in fact, uh, um, they even have built into the uh, contract that, you know, after four years, you're eligible for a free redesign if you wanted to, if you want to refresh, you know, within four years, you're eligible for that. Um, again, I talked about the, um, I talked about the online, about, about the hosting. You know, we were paying a separate company $2,000 a year to do the hosting separate from just the website. So that's now all included in the fee. So going forward, um, it's, a, it's an annual maintenance fee of $5,000 a year. And that includes, the, that includes the hosting fee, which we were paying you know, separately $2,000. Um, so uh, you know, in terms of, we looked around at what, what uh, what a web, what a new website costs. Um, I mean, the way I talk to people is, you know, we're a hundred million dollar company with twenty eight thousand customers, and you know, uh, you know, hundreds of divisions and departments and lots of information. Um, so the website is really an integral part of what we do, and it's an important investment. So um, I see that as, uh, you know, five thousand dollars a year as as um, a pretty good investment for what we're getting and the way we're being able to deliver services. Uh, consultation. Five thousand dollars a year. Period. There's no. I mean, we have. It's like not like our phone system where we have. We pay for a phone system, and then we have monthly. We have maintenance charges and different. No, that's uh, that's part of the annual maintenance fee that we pay on on. on Five thousand bucks total. So you know, we get to call if we have problems. You know, tr you know, tr again, customer support kinds of problems. Um, that's how it works. Sounds like a pretty good bang for your buck. Yeah. Um, and we did a lot of, you know, we checked a lot of references on the various companies. Um, Amherst actually moved to Civic Plus a few years ago. Um, Westfield, East Long Meadow, a number of uh, Valley communities have done that. So we had a lot, we had a good um, group of folks we could ask for references, and uh, they've all been uh, very pleased uh, with the service. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the thing that's changed, you know, we, when we built our website, we basically built it from scratch. And, and it was before municipal websites were really prevalent. And now there's companies that all they do is design websites for municipal government and state government because of all the sort of peculiar needs that we have around, you know, open meeting law and, and, and you know, government procurement and, and government hiring. So they've really, you know, customized, created these little modules for all these different aspects um, that really apply to the kind of work that we do um, so uh, so you know we were able to just kind of pick out these are the modules that we that are really important to us and customize it the way we want it and um, and I think it's a I think it's a great upgrade from the from the previous site so thank you yep any other questions uh, Councilor Schwartz. I just have a comment that I think it looks fantastic I'm really thrilled it was really fun to navigate it so thank you and we even have first night spotlighted, so uh, that's what, that's our spotlight event this month. So, I I have an account. I started an account, yes, and it's a, and uh, and in fact, actually, I think there's some flexibility built in here, so that essentially counselors can create their own accounts and contact points for for citizens, and hopefully, the expansion of the ability to do blogs for various counselors for various wards and stuff, so that the potential for growth and movement in this is actually really appealing on a lot of levels. I mean, I think one, we've had three websites. The first one was a blinking phone number in front of a picture of City Hall. You couldn't click on it, it wouldn't do anything. It just blinked and told you what the phone number was for City Hall. And I even think it had the address for City Hall wrong. And it lasted for, and that was what we had forever. And when we uh, got a local vendor to uh, craft the one that we we grown accustomed to. At the time, it was uh, an enormous improvement, but it did have, it, it clearly was way too clunky, and, and, and actually the search feature was the most germane. Well, the, I believe 
when the mayor was council president pushed to have a Google search window in there at the very least, but that meant it searched all of the universe for some department in, an, in a website. This isn't, this is built into the website. This searches the website exclusively. It's not going to give you uh, Northamptonshire in England or Northampton County in Pennsylvania. So I, I'm, I'm very pleased I, and it's, it's overdue and I think this is actually the, one of the strongest tools that we have for transparency and, and good process. So I'm grateful for this. It's, uh, my only other question is it, uh, some of the pages still seem to be loading up kind of slowly. And I don't know why that is. I, I think I originally I attributed to lots of migration of information at one point, but now it's still some pages you click and. I can, we'll, we'll uh, we can check on that. I mean, uh, we were having some slowdowns in, uh, in City Hall, but it was more attributed to some internet slowdowns that we were experiencing. But I can, you know, we can see if they can run some diagnostics on why some of the pages may be loading slow. Um, I know in the first, you know, 72 hours there were some migration issues of different features that took a while to move over once we changed the pointer to, to the new site but um, I can check on that and if you find that there's particular pages that are loading slow flag them for us and, yeah. we'll, and we'll check it out so. uh, this is fortunately we have the low bar of rollouts yeah. to compare this with and this is much better than the, the Affordable there Care was some Act release. Yes, believe, uh, believe me. Uh, uh, there was you ran the risk on running on yes. Friday the 13th and running yes. the risk of comparison with that. So exactly, it yes. took a big chance. Uh, Council Well, um, there's a great feature here, Community Voice. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, though, where does that the, for some of the spot where residents may or anyone may uh, express their views and submit? Does that come to your office? I think we'll be um, we'll be wa we'll be monitoring it in departments, and you'll see that some of the um, some, a lot of city employees have created profiles on the site as well. So they'll also be kind of in that universe. And as people vote on ideas, there's ways for people to vote on ideas. That site starts to t t tally like what are like really popular things that are there's sort of you know a lot of support for, and so we'll be able to monitor that and, and even, you know, get involved in the conversation if people want to do that in departments. We've seen some examples of how it works in other um, communities that are using the community voice module. Um, you know, it's things like, you know, talking about, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've had some discussions in the city about looking for a place to create like a dog park. I know that um, Councillor Labarge had done a survey monkey about that. And so you could have a conversation about something, a topic like that. Or um, or some other issue like that. Um, it's it's really it's not uh, it, you know, and we do have some protocols in place in terms of uh, making sure that there's you know not inappropriate language and uh, and things like that. There are some filters for those kinds of things. Um, we're not aiming for mass live here. We're we're yeah. aiming for hopefully a I hope so raising the bar just a yeah. few inches above. Uh, okay, <laughs> we're we're aiming for civic discourse, uh, online civic discourse. So. That, that was actually my question. Is there moderation for that, or is uh, is it uh, just there's, uh, there's some technical. automatic moderation? Just technical, in terms of, yeah, technical okay. moderation. And obviously, we have administrators who will be monitoring the site, and if there's inappropriate <laughs> things, they can be taken down. Administrate um, uh, city employee administrators or at uh, Civic City Plus? employee administrators. Yeah, and you know, we, we we have the ability. For example, if somebody, you know, was continuing to be inappropriate we can even block access to the site for that particular user if to that to that just the forum element yeah to not that. to not to like the calendar function. No, no 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 but if if you know so there are ways to deal with it and who's the who's the, who are the moderators we at this point um mis is going to be the primary administrators for the site but there are administrators within each department um and so we can set up some notifications in there to flag uh, different departments about issues that may be germane to their particular department. So we'll sort of see. I think we just have to kind of see, A, if people use it at all, and, and B, how it, how it plays out. But I, I think to that point, my concern would be um, having a number of arbiters deciding what constitutes good and bad speech. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things I think that 
requiring an actual name would be helpful mm -hmm. of anyone posting so they'd have to own what they're saying then beyond that there should be a list of rules so that everyone mm -hmm. going into this understands it and should they violate those rules that that, that they're subject to being deleted so mm -hmm. yeah, i mean even mass live does that although the you know, it's, it's a pretty wide berth as to yeah. how you interpret that. Yeah. Just along those same lines, I mean, we already have at least a policy in these chambers that um, precludes the disparaging of city employees. So right. I don't know to what extent yeah. something like that would extend into our... I didn't employees. open the module, but it's really, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite conversational to that level it's more like I have an idea and you put an idea out there and then people are allowed to vote on it or allowed to uh, to say you know, add comments that they like the idea or that you should change it you know, I do it this way or whatever it's not quite as free form as that um, but we'll we'll we will look into that and we have a, there are other communities who are using it so we can try to uh, right. tap into their experience it was one of the widgets that that um, when they were doing kind of their you know, they did a series of meetings to just sort of understand Northampton and understand you know some of the interests in the community and and this ability to have you know online social media type um, discourse was one of the things that came out of that so this seemed like a, a vehicle for that you know we can we'll assess it and, and see how it works so it's a nice feature um, is that it? Is there any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Councilor Carney, you may want to pull your microphone okay. toward you. I think. Oh. Uh, um, okay. We're, uh, then we come to the second reading for the resolution the city of Northampton be a Purple Heart community. No, we don't. No, we're not there. What? What did I miss? Oh. Recognition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? Uh, as I, as I announced at the opening of this meeting, this is the last meeting of this term, uh, two-year term for the City Council. We have th three councilors uh, going on to a better place, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> it's it. The and, is over. Right. Um, and, and we can't let that pass without recognizing their service. The, you know, it's, there, as a councilor, you don't, you don't get a lot of plaudits. You don't get a lot of thank you phone calls. You don't get a lot of gee, you are terrific. Um, and that, and actually, and 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 you know, we're all human beings with, with capacity of human frailty and sensitivities. And you know, it it asks a lot of people to endure their commitment and devotion to a community and work for that community while at the same time being a firewall for some opinions on occasion. And. It takes a special person to sign up and be a counselor, to step up, to first have yourself vetted and judged by your community, and then get elected. And once you've done that, then to serve. And service is uh, not cheap it, in, in an emotional sense. And the three people who are leaving us tonight have devoted a great deal of effort and work for their community. And, you know, if their colleagues can't honor that work, then then who 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 else will? And I I personally will speak for myself that the three counselors who are leaving, along with everyone else, but they they distinguish themselves, particularly in the moment of when we drafted the new charter, um, and that actually should be a point of pride with you guys when you leave. The work that we did on that was good work. It was thoughtful, deliberative, and it came and with excellent results, I think. Um, I think the community is coming around to understanding that as too, too, and we're still trying to understand the full influence of that charter and those decisions, but there were brave decisions, but there were thoughtful and calculated and deliberative decisions done utilizing all the forms of best practices. And the three counselors who contributed to that, who are leaving tonight, were more than an integral part. They they were, they were, you know, honestly, the charter, I think, would look much different had they not invested their energies and efforts in the discussion. 
all the biggest issues and challenges that face this community um, have been addressed by this council with with uh, with thoughtfulness and 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 at times bravery. So I I think it's only appropriate that at the very least we confer upon them identical plaques <laughs> with their names on them, and um, and I hope you'll all join me in um, thanking them with your applause. actually have some pithy remarks reserved for each counselor. Um, and I thought best. <laughs> I mean, I... It matches my color. <laughs> well, there you go, uh, yes. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's different material, though. The, um, yeah. uh, uh, there has been a tradition of council presidents uh, recognizing the work of uh, counselors in the past. Uh, I remember Pat Goggins used to do a poem. You too. So I'm sparing you that. Uh, 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 when Council President Higgins, the same way, she, she with her own unique brand of humor. Um, and uh, Councilor Bardsley, same thing. He did a little mini roast of each counselor who was leaving. I'll spare you all that. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> I mean, I think, yes, thank you, Bill. Because I honestly think, I think this deserves um, at least the, the, um, the sincerity. And, and, and I am sincerely grateful and really appreciate my work with you guys. And I will miss you. So thank you for your work. Thank you. Jeez, and, and, and I almost forgot that. And we, we went almost right on to uh, the resolution for the Purple Heart community. So <coughs> we'll do that next. <laughs> we don't have the power to confer Purple Hearts. <laughs> That's true. You probably have wounded. Got wounded. You earned it. Uh. <laughs> This is the uh, second reading for the uh, resolution of uh, calling for Northampton to become a Purple Heart community. Do you want me to waive reading? Please. Please. No. So I'll accept a motion on so second reading. Second. Any further discussion on this? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Just pass in second reading. Do you want to do the one minute announcement? Yeah. Uh, one minute announcements, anyone? Council Casey? <coughs> I had to write this down to, at the last uh, meeting. I spoke about Stephen O'Connor, and I forgot to mention he was a Northampton firefighter with my brother and my father. So when he passed, right. <coughs> I did not mention that. So I had to write this stuff down so I wouldn't forget anything. And this is John Joseph Rocket, yeah. named Jack. Uh, he passed away at 78 years young, uh, a very proud U.S. Army veteran of the Korean War from 1953 to 1957. He graduated the Springfield College and worked in Northampton Public Schools. John was the principal at the Florence Grammar School following the beloved Fred Tilly. And uh, he went, then went on to become a guidance counselor at JFK. Um, he also served on the Northampton City Council under Sean Dunphy and Wally Pachowski. Uh, Ward 4, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, Ward 4. Tremendous uh, citizen, tremendous family man. Uh, truly a pillar in the community, a giving man, and I'd like to thank him uh, for his service to our country and the city and our condolences to his family. And I would ask at this point for a, a brief moment of silence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other announcements? One minute announcements. Come on, last shot of the year. No? No events? Seriously? Okay. One minute announcement. Yeah. yeah I will. Thank you to all of my supporters in the city of Northampton. Thank you very much. It has been an honor. Thank you. Councilor Labar. proud. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Councilor Labar. That's a quick one. Um, I want to wish everybody in Ward 6 and throughout the city happy holidays and a safe New Year's. Uh, Council Murphy. And uh, just a 
quick thing. Uh, Florence will be having its illumination this weekend. I think there's a big ad in the paper today about that. Everybody's welcome to come up. It's a wonderful community event. So come up to Florence, enjoy yourselves, uh, and we hope you have a good time and a good holiday. Councilor Tracy. And as everybody on the council knows, uh, I did. I regret missing the stormwater meeting on the 17th. When the snow flies, everybody knows that's my cue. I have to go, and I was very. I regretted missing the meeting, but and it's the way it goes. Well, the, the all the rest of them went on without snow, <laughs> and the one for my ward, the guy that does the snow. Hey. There will be more opportunities for that discussion to be sure as we go into the new year and the new term. So, yes, there will. And, and I hope you'll be able to participate because your breadth of knowledge on, on this issue has is, is been particularly helpful as we've been discussing. So, I will be there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other one minute announcements? I knew there were, I knew if I pushed that we'd come up with some. No? All right. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Out. All right. Kitty's here. Uh, this is the. Certifying of the living wage and aspiring employers for 2013. Kitty Callahan is here um, from Living Wage Western Mass Steering Committee. How are you, Kitty? Hi, we, do we need to recognize Good. Kitty? Or? Um, no, because she's on the agenda. Yeah. Uh, can I pass out copies of the, um, the list? Please, yeah. It's an honor to be here tonight to acknowledge the certified um, living wage and aspiring employers for um, 2013. And this, this comes out of a, four years ago, um, the Northampton City Council unanimously passed a resolution that established this voluntary living wage campaign um, to encourage employers to pay a living wage. And we set up two kind of categories of certification. One is employers who, who pay a living wage, which is it's a bare bones basic needs budget. And um, it's grown from $11.90 an hour to $12.78 an hour for 2013, based on um, changes in the consumer price index. Um, and then the, the second category is for employers who can't now currently pay a living wage but who are willing to make it a goal and they aspire to pay a living wage and they're, they're working towards it. So I'll start by reading a list of employers who are paying at least $12.78 to each of their employees. Um, the law office of Jesse Adams, Allcraft fa Facial Plastic Surgery, Center for Mut New Americans, Chambers Advisory Group, Collective Copies, Community Legal Aid, Edwards Church, First Churches of Northampton, Fly by Night Incorporated, Haymarket Cafe, International Language Institute, The Jamrod Group, Jackanowski and O'Neill, Connector. Um, oh, I have. <laughs> a repeat here. <laughs> um, Lesser Newman and Nasser, The Literacy Project, Market Street Research Incorporated, The Media Education Foundation, Minuteman Pest Control, National Priorities Project, Northampton Area Pediatrics, Northampton Friends Meeting, Northampton Housing Authority, and Northampton Survival Center, Ostrander Law Office, Regali and Walder Orthodontics, Unitarian Society of Northampton and Florence, Valley Community Development Corporation, Weber and Grinnell Insurance Agency Incorporated, and Wall Family Dentistry. And then um, the list which has grown a bit this year is em employers aspiring to pay a living wage. Um, we have Barton's Angels, the City of Northampton, Raven, Use Books, River Valley Market, and Safe Passage. That is our list of certified employers for 2013. Could, could you describe uh, for employers who may 
pay a living wage and, and not made it to this list, how they might be able to be recognized for this? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, they, they could, we have a website at um, livingwagewestermass.net and they could go onto our website and, and download the forms or they could contact me at kcalliganlivingwagewestermass.net and I could s simply send them the forms. But we would be, we're still taking applications for 2013. We would be very pleased to um, receive additional applications. Um, so again, they can email me at kcalligan at livingwagewestermass.net. Um, just one interesting or curious point. So um, for the service and for the restaurant industry, for example, mm. Uh, those folks are in a different pay uh, in terms of minimum wage. There, there's a there's a, a set wage, state minimum wage for servers. So how would that get calculated for people in that industry? Would it be in the same way that the IRS calculates their wages for tax purposes, in terms of a percentage of the bill? I mean, is there is there a way that we could um, capture that data for that, especially since it's such a wide industry in the city of Northampton? Well. Um, Employers that have t that pay t where there's tipped employees, um, they fill out they fill out a form. It's it's actually probably not the best way to do this, but we have a basic needs form that they fill out, because obviously, they're not paying a, their employee a living wage, but if the employee is earning eleven dollars, twelve dollars and seventy eight cents an hour, they're they're going to get, they're they're going to be qualified, and that that would include counting the $2.63 an hour that is currently the minimum wage for tipped, tipped um, staff, plus, you know, the employer, they estimate the amount of the tips that are earned by the employee. So that's how it's calculated. Okay. Oh, um, what was it, how many were on last year? Do you, do you remember? Uh, yes, I, we had 31 certified employers. And I didn't count year. the list, but how many are there on this year? 33. Okay. So it's a small, tiny increase. It's what? A tiny increase it's from last year. It's a tiny year. increase, um, but every little bit counts. <laughs> um, I, th you know, I think that employees are grateful that this is being discussed and that you know, this effort is going on. And we've actually, in the past two weeks, we've gotten a lot of interest and we've actually certified a number of new empl employers this year. In, in the past two weeks um, so and we appreciate you know being able to you know acknowledge employers and and, and publicize you know our certification efforts here it's six, it's six percent growth I mean yeah, it is I could off, if I offered you six percent growth you know you <laughs> I'll take it yeah <laughs> and in addition as the mayor was talking about the website the list of certified employers is accessible on the city website that that's been something that that they've had for the past two or three years. Council LaBarge, good question. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you, Kitty, for coming back again. And I think this is great that this is happening, coming out of a recession. I mean, even with a little bit of an increase, it's showing you exactly what you just said, that they are doing this from their hearts. And I think at 1278, it's the beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Kitty. You. Thank you very much. Um, there are no license and petitions that are pending. Uh, we have come to the approval of minutes, and there is a late file for uh, SSVA. Move to approve. First. What am I doing? Approval of minutes on December 5th. Yes. Oh, December 5th. Yes. Okay. Let's first go. Yeah, Move to approve. They approve. Thank Sorry. you. That's a, is that a motion? I already yeah, sure. made it. Okay. And is there a second for the approval? For yes, I second. Any discussion on the minutes from the meeting of December 5th? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Sorry. I keep skipping over items in the... Uh, um, this is on reports of committees and appointments and elections. And, of course, the we're now... Uh, we have the minutes for... Um, Appointments and evaluation, uh, Monday, November 4th, 2013. 
and the minutes for um, the SSVA uh, October 21st meeting. Move to approve the minutes of appointments and evaluations, and we need to suspend Rule 34 because of a late file. Okay. Well, let's. Why don't we deal with? Why don't we do with uh, the the first one? So, okay. Move okay. to approve. All Second. those in all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. And now a motion to suspend rules to uh, admit Move a late file. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Accept a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, and now a uh, new appointment to the Commission on Disability, uh, James Winston, uh, 142 Main Street uh, in, uh, what's that? Main Street? Sweet One. Sweet One, thank you. <laughs> okay. To approve. Uh, okay. Second. Second. The motions are made and seconded. I thought, we could, I thought it was going to say, okay. Uh, any discussion on the on the candidate? Um, uh, Councilor Adams. I, I know Attorney Winston. I think he'll be an excellent addition. He's a, a part of his practice is disability law. Yeah. And um, and I think he'll be a great addition. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Councilor Spector and then Councilor. Yeah, Lillard. I'm very grateful that someone with his skill set has decided to be on the committee. I think it's it's really great the appointment. Councilor Labarge. I highly recommended him um, at our meeting on um, appointments and evaluations. I have to say that uh, Mr. Winston uh, apparently attended several of our commission meetings, and he was very, very interested in belonging to this committee, and I think he's going to be a great asset. I mean, he attended many, many meetings. Any further discussion on the candidate? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We're now going to go into recess for the Finance Committee. Uh, maybe perhaps for the last time. Boom. Uh, we're in recess. I pass the gavel figuratively, figuratively to uh, the Chair of the Finance Committee, Councilor David Murphy of Ward 5. And Mary, the role of finance. Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor Dwight? Yes, here. Councilor Labarge? Present. Councilor Tacey? Here. And we have one item in stereo here. Uh, only one thing tonight, and this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narcoli. Order that the City Council appropriate $6,000 to the FY14 Treasurer's legal account to continue funding for tax title collection efforts to meet that appropriation transfer $6,000 from the receipts reserved for appropriation tax title. Uh, move to recommend. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this one? Everybody familiar? This is an ongoing thing. And we have the George Zimmerman, our treasurer, here tonight. I'd ask the treasurer to be here um, if you wanted to just explain a little bit about mm -hmm. this process. Yes, I'd like to recognize him, move. please. Second. Uh, all right. All in favor of recognizing George? Uh, aye. 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 Great. The, uh, the funding for the collections for the tax title uh, comes from two sources. It's part of the budget, and it's anticipated that there will be uh, the revolving, or, or rather the receipt reserved account available. Uh, it's estimated that uh, funding for the uh, collection costs will run in the vicinity of ten dollars to $12,000 a year. In the past two years, it was $8,000 in FY13 and $9,000 in FY12. Uh, uh, this uh, is so far we've had success with this. We've been using outside counsel for collections for about five years now. That's the firm of Berenson and Bloom located in East Hampton, Massachusetts. And this is a self-primed and uh, perpetual uh, motion machine. What I mean by that is under Chris Pyle as the previous finance director, 10,000 was allocated to prime this venture. And then as we go along, the, uh, the, the dollars that we pay out for collection efforts upon completion of the transactions, meaning full payoff of the transaction, the attorney's fees that we've paid along the way are, are part of the uh, tax title amount due the city. So as long as we keep going forward uh, and continuing uh, forward, we'll, um, we'll be in good shape. Uh, at present, there's about 
oh, a little over 20,000 in the receipt reserved account. So we've been building some money up. So that 6,000 allocation is uh, easily handled. Uh, and uh, this year we've spent uh, $4,000 and we've overspent 2,000. So it looks like we might be uh, a little bit more than the eight or 9,000, more in the 10 to 12,000 range that uh, we project. Councilor Tacey, Council Labarge, and Councilor Murray. And this is money that you hold in reserve. This is works similar to our overlay for uh, abatements and, um, and different exemptions. This is, so this is money that you draw on every year for this particular purpose. Yeah, there's a lot of different analogies that, that can be made, but that's, yeah, I know, but that's it, an apt analogy. But that's money that's already there. We're not taking this money out of a general fund. We're, this is money that's already sitting in an account for this particular purpose. Correct. So if, as I go along, Berenson and Bloom uh, bills us, and that's roughly in the vicinity of, uh, it could be anywhere from 400 to $800 a month. And we pay as we go, and then when the transactions are completed, meaning paid off, uh, the taxpayer pays uh, the fee that we incurred, and that goes into that fund, and then it's allocated by council vote for uh, use in additional uh, collections. And the amount of money is always a squeaker. There is no, we're not hoarding any money in that account. It's always just enough to, yeah, to continue. Yeah. Okay. I just want everybody I, to know I, that. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Council Labar. Thank you, George. How many tax title collections are we dealing with? Because I know usually every year we'll get an update on that. How are we doing with that? Well, that's part of the perpetual mo uh, motion machine. When I came in, we had about uh, in excess of 160 uh, matters in collection. Uh, at this point, we have 92. Uh, and in that 10 years that I've been treasurer, there is on average 20 that come in. So it's not simply a matter that I've gone, say, from 160 down to 90, collecting 60. I've, I've completed 260 transactions. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, I will say that uh, when we transition going to an outside collection firm, it has been successful, meaning any collection efforts I've engaged in uh, are not responded to uh, as much as if the city solicitor was uh, sending out. But then when you take it one step further and have outside councils uh, sending out, it really gets the attention. Our um, residents who are under tax title. I know at one point the city worked very closely with residents where they could make like payments. We, we do that. Um, uh, Don Bloom is uh, very specialized in uh, the efforts uh, and the options uh, that are available uh, to the taxpayers. So in order to protect the taxpayers and yet get the job done, it's an unfair burden to other taxpayers who are paying their taxes that somebody doesn't. But there are always some certain situations that occur that need uh, some attention. So I regard this process to be something that's firm but fair. So initially, we, uh, after the tax title matter is certified from the treasure, uh, from the collector to me as treasurer for collection. A lien is recorded at the registry of deeds. I work it myself one year in an effort to give that taxpayer every opportunity to come forward. And if we can enter into a payment agreement, uh, great. Uh, other uh, options available that Don uses is uh, going to the, um, if, if there's any uh, mortgages or second mortgages, uh, if those matters are brought to the attention of the bank, often they'll come through because our tax lien is above any mortgage. So th there's a various uh, number of mechanisms that we use. But we do, uh, again, the, the watchwords firm but fair. Isn't there something also, talking with one of my residents last year, in regards to say that whenever they sell their home, Say they don't pay taxes, but once they sell their home, they pay the city back the taxes that is owed. Well, there's two there's two different arrangements. Uh, well, uh, there's deferred taxes under Section 41A, uh, and that en enables a taxpayer, um, an older taxpayer, of not exceeding a given income, and that's something the assessor addresses or handles, and that taxpayer today can. If that person qualifies, the taxpayer can have uh, a 5% accrual rate on their taxes, and the, t the taxes don't have to be paid each year. So when that property is sold, 
uh, or when that particular individual who qualifies for that 41A exemption is no longer a resident or occupant of that property, then that uh, amount becomes due. Otherwise, under tax title, uh, well, uh, you know, strategically, a, um, a resident could do that themselves, but they'd be uh, incurring 16% interest. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. And George, You're I'd like to actually thank you. Uh, during your tenure, a lot of progress has been made on this, and the total number hasn't gone down as much as we'd like, but we all realize it's a really tough economic time for a portion of that, so we obviously added some new people, but the total count has gone down pretty dramatically, uh, even when you consider the tough economic times that we just recently went through. So, I mean, the city has benefited from your efforts to focus on this and try and get everybody as current as possible. Well, thank you. Uh, we've gone from 1.5 million outstanding to one half million, and I'm 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 talking about real collectible matters. And the nuances of this, I mean, there's some you just know you got to wait them out, and there's some you can actually collect on. So it's it's not just as straightforward as people might think it is. But thank you for your efforts and your progress. You're welcome. My pleasure, Councilor Teese. The the tax defer. Uh, you have to be 70 years old, or is it 65? I don't know. I leave that to Joan. Yeah, um, and you, you can only defer a certain it's percentage. It's the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you can only defer a certain percentage. You can't defer the entire amount of your tax bill, can you? Uh, yeah. You can. Yes, you can. We have two tiers right now, just as a curious footnote. Up until uh, 2007, we had 8%, but then as interest rates plunged, then City Council voted that down to 5%. 5%. Mm -hmm. So in regard to any tax title, uh, or rather 41A deferral that occurred before 2006, that 8% remains on that particular deferral and still carries for, mm -hmm. forward into yep. perpetuity, but anything 2007 and after is at 5%. Mm -hmm. I just a, wanted to echo to what Councilor Murphy said. I think you've done a fantastic job in, in, in bringing these tax delinquents down. I think mm -hmm. you've done a great job, and I thank you very much for it. Mm -hmm. And I know it's You're not welcome. easy. And thank and, you for uh, the I remember you struggling very much over... You were my first oh, customer. Over, oh, <laughs> I remember you struggling also over the little piece <laughs> off of uh, Pleasant Street underneath yeah. I got what they call Kirkland, it. Kirkland Ave. Yeah. Yep. And you get so many people that get tied up with a with a tax delinquency with eight or ten people that are on it. And if you have one that wants to pay off their sa their share, they can't. Because it doesn't work that way. You gotta you have, have it. You have all eight together to pay it mm -hmm. to make it work. And I know many people, including myself, that have come into that situation. And it's just impossible. And so, and I think you did a great job. I, you were fantastic um, on, well, on just, my situation. Yeah, just as a, as a footnote, when I had started in 2004 in January, that's when I first met Gene. And he came in with a complicated fact pattern, as they all are, involving an estate with multiple parties and different parcels. And you really overtaxed me <laughs> after 30 days into the job. But, but we worked it out. But it and was, that you, was and fun. It got started with it. And I want to thank you very much for that, too. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, I took sole possession of the property myself and then paid it in full. But it was. And donated a right of way. And donated land. To the, uh, to, and to, the, uh, the, to, to the bike path. I kept you busy for two years. And I thank you very much. You don't know how much I appreciate it. I'll send you my bill. Thank mm -hmm. you. And, and I just wanted to remind people, we talked about it a little bit, but it is possible for qualified seniors, if they're having trouble making ends meet, to defer their taxes. And they should start off by going to the assessors, because if you're having a hard time and you're a senior and you have a lot of equity in your home, you can defer paying your taxes totally legally. Go talk to the assessors. That's the entry point. But if you're qualified, you should not worry about making ends meet because of paying your property taxes. You can defer them. Um, uh, they'll get paid eventually, but go see Joan Serafin. She'll tell you if you're qualified or not, and it's uh, something nice that the Commonwealth and the city does for seniors. You can you at some point put that off and, and pay your medical bills and heat your house and buy food and pay your insurance and do the other things you need to do, and it's all made right in the end. So please check into that if you're a senior and you're having a hard time making ends meet. At 5%. At, at 5%. You're right. So anything else on... Uh, this thank issue, or we're ready to vote on this one uh, in finance. Just thank you for your humanity. And uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here on the uh, occasion of the uh, uh, the last council meeting this year, and especially on Pam's and Owen's and Jean's uh, last day of service. And thank thank you 
all. George, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. So uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation on this matter in Aye. finance? Aye. No Aye. opposed? All right. Great. Then uh, a motion to adjourn finance. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we uh, convene back in regular session now. <clears throat> um, uh -oh. What's your first item? <laughs> the, um, this is uh, upon the recommendation of uh, Mayor David J. Narkowitz. Um, my computer's trying to upload updates. Uh, to continue funding for tax title collection efforts and to meet the appropriation transfer of six thousand dollars from receipts reserved for appropriation tax title. Move approval. Second it. Um, for those of you watching at home, yes, deja vu all over again. But uh, is there any further discussion on this item? Nope. Uh, Mayor, do you have any remarks you want to make to this? Just highlighting the request for two readings. Obviously. There's been a request for two readings. Okay. Um, uh, roll call on the first reading. Please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labarge? Brett. Yes. Yes. Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Tate? Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Aye. Move second Look reading. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Tacey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Okay, this is in second reading. Um, this is a financial order of the appropriation of $30,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding to Conservation Commission for Northampton Ecological Assessment of Open Space. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion on this item? Do you want me to waive reading? Waive reading, please. Is any further discussion? Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. Yeah. Just to get this over with, can we recognize Daryl Valley and uh, John Meyer? Uh, yeah, there's a motion to recognize Downey Meyer and Sarah so Valley. Second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No need to step up yet, I'm gathering, but it's just queuing up. Um, any further discussion on this? No? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Tacey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. All right. Computer is subverting me. Uh, this is a financial. This is an appropriation of. Uh, $250,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding to Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability for the Norwatic Mass Central Rail Trail Extension Project. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion on this item? No? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Tacey? I will abstain in case of a conflict. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. I, I just don't know which department's going to receive that money since the legal name of it is Office of Planning and Development. Yeah, I don't, well, <laughs> it's. I just don't know. Well, <laughs> That's not an unreasonable question. The, the uh, we now function the the change in the office name. Yet in some of the applications and circumstances, the office has a different name, um, and I don't know how that covers it legally. Although it does cover planning in both cases, but mm -hmm. but um, the city solicitor might want to look into that and, and creating some continuity and just a suggestion, but. Um, I think the right people will get the money. I just I'm <laughs> pretty sure that's I'm confident of that. But I think I think to be to have T's crossed correctly and I's dotted properly, and, and, and I hope it will be written so that it'll be used on that particular piece that we discussed, and not on any other little improvements throughout the trail before that. 
I, I believe that the, it's laid, the scope of work is laid out in the, uh, I, I think you told me that the last yeah, meeting, the scope I'm of work. I, well, I'm just hoping that okay. we don't uh -huh. divert any of those funds to something else that is not actually in the application. Like lottery tickets or mm -hmm. something. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> we won't get into the debate. All right. The next uh, next item is the financial order. This is appropriation of $250,000 from the Community Preservation Act. <laughs> Funding to 22 to 34 New South Street Apartments restoration project. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion on this? Councilor Adams. After our our discussion last time, um, particularly with respect to the, the comments of, of the wards five and seven councilors whose concerns I took seriously, um, I asked Ms. Lavalley to do some research on how much money the city's put into that particular. Um, location because I was concerned that it, it was um, you know maybe it is a money pit where every every 10 years we're we're dumping a, a quarter million into it and what I've learned uh, from Ms. LaValle was that um, there's a hundred thirty thousand um, dollars in community development block grant money currently um, going to that and I'd like to hear more about that but I also I also learned that in 2008, we spent $35,000 on settlement work. In 1996, uh, we spent $50,000 in tenant relocation costs. And that's it. So it, it, um, I'm, I'm, I was happy to learn that it's not a project that we're dumping endless amounts of money into every, every 10 years. So perhaps if Ms. LaValle could um, uh, articulate that further. So um, after I communicated with Councillor Adams, I also found out that there was an additional $50,000 in 1993 that was granted through the CDBG program to allow Valley CDC to acquire the property. So that was acquisition costs. Um, and then in 1996, there, the $50,000 went towards tenant relocation when there was a substantial of both interior and exterior work being done to the structure. Um, in 2008, there was an $130,000 that was awarded as part of the negotiation settlement re related to the roundhouse development, um, but that is going directly towards the rehabilitation of the, the building. And the, uh, the legal costs were um, awarded to the previous owner as part of that lawsuit settlement. Okay, if I could just, um, could you tell me about the $130,000 in community development block grant money? So that is, that was awarded to Home City Housing and will be used as a as a match for these community preservation So the, that's going towards the exact same project. Oh. Oh. Councilor Tayson, then Councilor Murphy. That was sixty-five thousand dollars in each year and for two years in a row. I out of CDBG money. So. Yeah, it was not one hundred thirty thousand dollars at once. It was two years in a row. I don't have the timeline, but okay. but in any case, the money that money has not yet. Yeah, been and then there was that money also was to go towards an extension of the affordable housing yes. length of time. Yes. So in in return for that hundred thirty thousand, the city got an extension um, of the affordable housing agreement from two thousand twenty eight till now two thousand fifty three. Okay. So and those units are guaranteed to be affordable until at least 2053. And who is the actual owner of the building now? Home City Housing. Home City Housing. They purchased it from Valley City. So Home City Housing was the CPA applicant in this case. Okay. I know when I worked there a few years ago, it was owned by a company out of Boston. Uh, yes. I see yes. something. And Sandra Blackman. And that was the entity that was awarded the settlement funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Council Murphy. So not having my abacus, what's the total? Today, I got it. Five, I gave 510,000. It was my calculation since 93, so in 20 years. Yeah. Right. Uh, that would be with the addition of the CPA funds. Yeah. With the with 250 that you're yes. talking about, yeah. so roughly half a million dollars. Yeah. So, so we're talking about, and thank you for doing that. Work. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and 
Are you, are you finished? I'm finished, yeah. Okay. I got my tone. Councilor Adams, I'd like to thank you for, for doing that because I think that shows over a 20-year period on a building like this to spend, including the money that, that's coming in, spending $500,000 is a very different kind of figure than the impression I was also left with. Um, so I appreciate your asking for those numbers and, and having them come forward. Thank you. Any further discussion on this point? Mr. Freeman Daniels, do you look puzzled? No? Not puzzled or not puzzled enough? It's the Still 250000 The money's out the door, so, but I am curious about what, ha what the 130 in the settlement went to. I mean, was, was that rehabilitation? Did it? That is rehabilitation to mm -hmm. the, so direct work to the structure. So that was in result of a legal settlement? Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilor Murphy. Though they did sue the city to get the 130000 yeah. You know, so that was. It happens from time to time. Something less involuntary, but oh well. Uh, Councilor Adams, do you have any more? No, I don't. Uh, any further discussion? Any more questions? Yep. Uh, I'll ask the Secretary to call the roll, please. Councilor Barge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? No. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Tacey? No. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Okay. Uh, this is an appropriation for $194,500 from this uh, Community Preservation Act funding to the Pulaski Park Renovation Project. And this is the second reading. Is there a motion put it on the floor? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Speck. Could we, uh, could the mayor, if he could answer a couple of questions on this? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Good evening. So, Mayor, you were here in the public session. You heard a couple of former esteemed counselor um, questioning why we're moving this forward and requesting the tabling of this mm -hmm. motion. And, I, and, and one of the reasons was, was being that, uh, that some citizens think that the two projects should be kind of conflated into one and both, both pieces should move forward as one. And I, I just wonder what your impression was of that and how you would address that. Well, I was a little perplexed by the assertion that the CPC committee was unaware of the Roundhouse Redevelopment Project because I attended both of the hearings that the CPC held on the application and um, as one of the co-applicants, a significant amount of time was spent discussing that very issue with members of the yeah. CPC committee um, who were obviously aware of the Roundhouse project process that was going on and wanted to understand why I believe the two processes could could coexist, um, and again, I referred to the fact that uh, that our um, design professional had really emphasized, you know, letting the Stimson-led process that had already begun continue, and in fact, help inform the um, the, the roundhouse development process as it's moving forward, which I think is on a much slower track, yeah. frankly. <clears throat> um, and in fact, today, uh, in the mail, we got the Simpson report. Uh, we got a hard copy in the mail. We got a disc and it's, in the mail. And it's on the website. Yeah, we loaded it up to the website um, and essentially kind of reviews the process, the, the work the, that they did. That's the Utah report? The Util report, okay. correct. Uh, I'm sorry, I said Stimson. Thank you for correcting me, yeah. Counselor. Um, uh, the Util report is on there. And uh, and there's going to be a lot more, essentially their, their um, recommendation is that we need to do a lot more analysis and have a lot more study um, of a lot of different issues. And, and in fact, recommending a, 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 a considerable more thought about the design, about parking, about a lot of different issues. So I think the committee that we have in place is a good one. Uh, the council's involved in it in, in intimately since the Edlu committee um, you know, has full representation on the committee and they you know, will be working on that project. I mean, I will say one of the one of the pieces of the report, which is, you know, uh, I think is important for people to understand, is um, some of the the various um, uh, development um, ideas that were played around with. Um, even the sort of the optimal one of the of the, of the many um, indicated that it's marginal at best in yeah. terms of feasibility, economic feasibility, and the parking is the big issue. Um, 
and that's that was the issue, frankly, with the hotel project. Um, you know, the requirement that we have to replace the parking um, really drives up development costs and creates other issues. So there's a lot more study, <laughs> and I know the committee uh, was waiting for this report, and I think this, when the committee gets back together in February, this is going to be an opportunity for additional, you know, forums, additional discussion, uh, maybe even, you know, uh, there was some talk about doing kind of a design, um, some further design work going out to the development community to seek uh, design ideas for it. Um, and again, I think the park is a separate, you know, the park is Chapter 97 land. It's a public park. It's, you know, controlled. They've been going through a much longer process uh, dating back to when I was the Ward 4 City Councilor when right. I served on the very first uh, Pulaski Park redesign process uh, that Nancy Denig uh, uh, participated in that led to then a um, anybody who wants to submit a design design process which again a, a number of designs were were put forward um, and then uh, there was an evaluation and uh, and eventually the Stimson proposal or you know initial schematic was chosen of course we didn't have any funding at that point um, and now that the CPC uh, CPA law has changed there's now a funding source so as I've said before I think that um, I think we have an opportunity to, to move forward. The, the, and again, the, the, this is not the, what's happening is Stimson is being hired to actually um, complete the initial schematic work that it did. And that includes a very robust public process. And I know the chair is here. There was a lot of questions about that process and how it would be conducted. Um, and Stephen Simpson uh, does this work uh, all around the country and is quite uh, renowned for the, for the work that he does. And are very sensitive to that. So, um, I think that people will have an opportunity to, to give input about both development, both both projects as we move forward. And I really don't see them as um, being mutually exclusive. And that something that happens in one is going to be irreparable and cannot be reversed or cannot be uh, synthesized. Um, uh, you know, that's yeah. my concern about. Um, delaying when we have access to funding um, that's going to become available. Uh, we have Councilor Freeman Daniels next, uh, Councilor Tracy, and the Council of Origin. Before we go, I just want to go into that. I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on our terms. Everyone keeps talking about developing the roundhouse. We don't own the roundhouse. We own the roundhouse lot. And mm -hmm. I think we got it right. very specific yeah. because this is the way we suddenly the city acquired a dog park. Mm -hmm. It's the, the constant use of terms starts to breed this sort of sense of misunderstanding. So is the lot that is right over here. Mm -hmm. It is not the roundhouse. It's just that is the most identifiable feature in that lot. So we're we call not it the just, roundhouse lot. Yeah, right. Exactly. So because there's a person who owns the roundhouse, they're probably getting a little nervous about the discussion. And among them, uh, Councilor Freeman. Dale. I yield. I yield to the other councilor. Uh, councilor Tacey, you were next. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course. My concern about the whole mess um, is the park and the roundhouse lot. Not only did we get sued by New South Street Apartments and pay them $130,000, we also got sued by Robert Curran. We paid him $75,000 in cash. We deeded him 22 lots, 22 parking spaces, which he did not own at the time down there. We were ordered to bury all of the public utilities and all of the privately owned mm -hmm. utilities by the by the court order, which we've done. So the amount of money, so I'm gun shy. The amount of money that the city actually lost in that last little ordeal is tremendous. It could be, maybe it's at the very least half a million dollars. It could be higher. But still, the economic the feasibility or the return on investment on the development of that piece of property is very is very iffy. Mm. It's very iffy. But we did have a bid. We had actually we sold it to a company for a dollar that couldn't even come up with a letter of a finance letter. And that was the end of it after years of back and forth. And we actually had a man that was going to give us I think $75,000 or $750,000 for the property at the time. And we told him, no, have we approached him again at all? Or have we asked him if he was still interested in, he was going to do an office and retail 
uh, office retail and, and residential development. So why we don't want to bring these two together? Why do we want to go forward with one first and tie the hands of a developer that would like to invest money in the city of Northampton that that we may tie his hands even more and make it more difficult for him to develop that piece of property? Can, can I address that? that? Mr. Curran, actually. Robert J. Curran. He sued us. Yes. When he didn't get the bid. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, um, uh, I understand, and I understand yeah. all that, mm -hmm. and so I'm kind of gun shy. Yeah, he's aware of the, yeah, he yeah. understands the, the process is going. I've spoken to him about it. Yeah. Um, and so you have been in touch with him? Uh, yeah, we, we, he's taken me on a tour of his building, and we've, yep. met, uh, we've met before. We've talked about some of the issues outside around parking, and um, he's been trying to attract some new companies to locate in the building, so we've been working with him to try to, to do that. So. Yeah, and you may remember the council approved a, a small lease to him yes. last yes, year yep. for some planting improvements that we mm -hmm. did near his parking lot. So, yep. um, the, uh, the next in line was Council Labarge. You have a point of information or a point of order? No, I can. Okay, Council Labarge. Yes, he was before me. Oh. Um, well, thank you. All, all right. Uh, it, it does follow on, on Councilor Stacy's comments, which years ago when we were having the public meetings about design for the park and interest in the park. Certainly something that I heard, I, I, I'm always afraid to say consensus, but the vast majority said, we don't want to, this is our park. This is the city's park. This is our park to decide what the use should be, what it should look like, how we're going to use it. And we don't want a developer, whoever it is, even a great developer, coming in and dictating to us how that's done. We'll work with them which is exactly why I think we should move forward with this. There's two reasons. One, we move forward because I too have been, uh, I've heard about this property being developed now, I guess for about 10 years when it first came forward. And I would give some odds that it's not gonna be developed for quite a while. And that was the interesting thing in the executive summary of the report that just came through today. They're kind of implying there's gonna be a long, potentially very slow process, both in bringing people together with more analysis to write an RFP this could take quite a while just to do that, to bring the community together, to have those meetings. Then number two, to find somebody who's gonna do that because it's really questionable, as you point out, whether this is financially feasible. Now, you know, maybe someday. So do we wait years and years and years? And even if somebody were to come along, I would say the advantage is, as with many people who are building around current large public spaces, coming in and developing them, they have to develop them in such a way that they are compatible with that space. And I say, let's move forward on what, this, what the city has said and the residents of this city said, we want in Pulaski Park, how we want it to look. I don't believe we're then tying a developer's hands. I believe we're then saying to the developer, here's what you need, we can work with them. And there is the outside chance. I think one of the fears is we're gonna waste money if we move ahead now and do the park because we're gonna have to make some changes. I think there's a very small chance of that if a developer came and said, look, this has to be changed in the park. But I think there's a much greater chance that we're gonna look at a very long, slow process of anybody coming in there. And I, for one, think the park being there actually aids a developer coming and say, how are we gonna then, either as a community, look at what kind of building we want or a specific developer responding, what kind of building to interface with the park itself. I guess I would also just remind people that there's a significant kind of buffer at the I mean, you've got that whole bank. There's a significant sort of break between the two properties that you may remember there was a whole a hotel was going to cut, it was going to fill all that in and extend, you know, so there's um, most of the focus on, on this redesign is going to be the park proper. It's not going to be the, the bank there. And, and I think even in the, in the recommendations and in the application, um, and in the conversations between Stimson and Util, that issue of, of having that transition point so that if there was some future development, it could, you know, be integrated with, with what's happening, if at all. It may just be a, an improved walkway. It may, be a, it may be an improved walkway slash bike access ramp. Um, you know, there, there are, we don't know what that's going to be, but I, I guess from my concern is I support this Pulaski Park project and I don't want to wait for an indefinite amount of time for us to move forward on it. Um, that's my concern. And there'll be plenty of opportunity, even during those visioning processes, for people to raise those very questions about how the park might relate to a future development. I think that can be part of that visioning process. I don't think the two ideas are incompatible. Councilor LaBarge, Councilor Murphy, Councilor 
Freeman Daniels, you haven't spoken yet, and then Councilor Thank you. And then Councilor Adams? Oh, I'm sorry. No, that was after all that. All right, okay. Mayor, is the clock ticking on this? Because I'm concerned with a former councilor who I've never seen her come here before to ask us to table something. I agree about best practices. I think I'm really into best practices and transparency. Would one more meeting, which was requested in the open public session, hold this back? I think I am hearing from that former consular about having one more meeting, which I think could be put in place very quickly, starting the first of the new year, and then vote on the second reading. Um, I guess, well, this would be the last meeting of the council, so you've been the ones deliberating on all of these applications. Um, but I'm just asking so, you, Mayor, would it make yeah, it? I guess, my, I guess one of my uh, questions is, there's already two entities that are involved in, in the two projects and processes, so I'm not sure um, what, how, how, what role the council would have at this point in, in that. Um, I, I guess I, I'm just... Uh, what was uh, yeah? I'm just concerned. What did Calvin Coolidge say about you can't get in trouble for what you don't say. So I uh -huh. don't say anything. So I won't say anything further. I just I really, um, you know, frankly take exception to the idea that this has somehow been done non-transparently or that that there are people who haven't been part of this process. I, I just yeah. I find that um, I think this process has been very open. We've we've been going at a slow, deliberative pace. We've made efforts to advertise extensively in the newspaper and social media. We had a, a packed hearing here. Um, it's only the first, we've only had one hearing on, on, on the project. Um, and then we're gonna have a lot more process. And the same holds true for the Pulaski Park process. And, uh, and people have an opportunity to participate in, in both of those processes. So um, I, I just uh, don't understand why we would wanna move forward while this council who has been following this process mm -hmm. has received this recommendation and then to have it um, kicked into the next council. I just don't understand that. Uh, I think that it could be moved forward and you could still have that meeting if you wished. Um, but I don't believe that it, this project has to be held hostage to that, uh, whatever meeting that is, which I don't quite understand. Councilor That's Murphy. why I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Murphy, then Councilor Freeman Daniels. Mm -hmm. Councilor Adams and Councilor Schwartz. Ooh. I remember that. Then. Keep that straight. Yeah. Pulaski Park's been really awful for a really long time. It's our park. It's our responsibility to fix it. Um, this money begins the study to finally get around to doing that. And I don't. it's our park. It's our responsibility. It's our money. I don't really want to tie finally getting around to improving this big chunk of Main Street street streetscape to what we're going to do with a contaminated parking lot about 50 feet below that. I mean, there's a lot of issues down there that have to be settled. Let's get on with fixing our park. And whenever we get around to deciding what to do with the roundhouse parking lot, named so only because of its proximity, you know, it's our chunk of contaminated land now. Let's do the park and then work on what we're going to do in the parking lot. It could take a really long time to deal with that. And I'm really tired of Pulaski Park being that awful right on Main Street. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of funding this. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, we're, I'm not even sure where to start. Uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, uh, you remember my uh, questions and anxiety around this issue. I do. Last, I most uh, certainly do. Uh, last yeah. meeting. Um, and uh, I, I ultimately voted in favor of it. And, um, and uh, I, um, I, I'm still... I still have anxiety um, about it, but uh, I'm, I won't. I won't in a few days. Uh, I guess. I guess the. Uh, I I agree um, with the public comment. Um, I don't agree that, that that this has been done. Uh, that that much of this has been done behind the scenes, um, or or not with public involvement. The CPC meetings very, um, very open. Um, it was known for a long time that the DPW was working on this, uh, this design, um, and we've, we have had a, a lengthy process before that. Um, 
and, sure uh, and, and we're rejected in an earlier round. And, right, and we're scheduled school. to have another one. I mean, I, I think $40,000 of this 190 is going towards uh, the community discussion and, mm -hmm. and uh, vetting of plans and so on and so forth. Um, but I do believe, so I, I don't agree with that particular part, and I agree with you that it, this hasn't been something that uh, the, the, the Pulaski Park project or the Roundhouse project have not been done um, in, uh, behind the scenes. Um, I think that there's been good public involvement. But uh, what I, what I, where I agree with the public comment is that uh, this really is an opportunity that, uh, to do both um, parcels uh, contemporaneously. And, um, and uh, I think, so, so the, I think the question that uh, Council LaBarge asked you which, um, which I'm going to ask again in a different way, uh, is is really the sort of a, a telling question. Which is, uh, so the question is, other than time, what's the downside to not funding this tonight and funding it, you know, in in the next session? I, I guess my question is, um, I guess I'd have to understand. Uh, what the council would be doing, what what the council's role, plan or role would be in this process. I mean, I guess part of me thinks that, you know, perhaps what's being suggested is that we ask Stimson to lead the redesign of a park as well as the visioning process for a, you know, potentially developable parcel and that the two should be done at the same time, um, which means a completely different, I suppose, application, although the Roundhouse parcel wouldn't be eligible for CPC funding, so I guess we'd have to figure out a different. I, I, I guess I'm just I'm a little bit at a loss. I understand what people are thinking, um, and I understand reasonable people can disagree about this, um, but I I still do not understand why the two have to be so intricately linked, particularly when we spent um, when you know the the off-sited Hilton Garden project. All we heard was that you're you know you're building a you know, uh, a hotel in Pulaski Park. Many people thought it was being built in Pulaski Park, but but that, that we were not giving enough consideration to the park and what the impacts on the park were, that that development did not make those considerations. Um, and so I, I, I'm, I'm not really sure what the harm would be of moving forward with the park design uh, when we know that this other, uh, again, if I thought that it was going to jeopardize redevelopment of the of the lot, I wouldn't be suggesting it because I've been one of the biggest proponents of we should take a look at this parcel and see if there's anything we can do with it. Um, I just, I, I, I think I can, we can manage these two projects and these two processes and they um, don't have to be a combined process. So that um, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, is there some extra body now that's going to take over these two processes? Um, the city council surplus the roundhouse lot, mm -hmm. gave it to the gave it to the mayor to be able to run this process. I've worked in consultation with the EDLU committee. We formed this committee with citizens and EDLU members, and we've been working on the process. Similarly, the Board of Public Works had a whole citizen process and a subcommittee and many meetings and design competitions and have been moving forward. Um, and now, uh, as we're about to fund, you know, actually moving forward on one of them, we're told that we now need some larger committee to now oversee both processes or something. I guess I'm just trying to understand so what I, that's all about. So, so yeah. I just, I'm, I'm just I almost, I'm almost done here. I what the, um, so that, what, that so the that is answering a question with a question, but I understand that's a legitimate question that you have. Um, but I also have a legitimate this question. This isn't my proposal, so it's hard for me to answer your question. But it is, but this, me, this is my, your, it's not my proposal to table it for the purposes of merging the two processes no, but together. My, but my question remains, which is, the, the harm, the downside to waiting is that you don't know what to do next. Well, I guess I, I, guess I would also ask the question, I mean, you, to play this thing out, I mean, you're, you've just invested $250,000 in the South Street apartments. Did, should we hold off on those investments so we can make sure that they're congruous with the roundhouse lot in Pulaski Park? I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, I just, I'm not quite sure. It seems like we're able to move forward on that project right next door to the roundhouse lot. Um, well, if, if the Alaskan Park was falling down, I'd feel a little different about it. But exactly. What, exactly. I, what, I, um, what I, I think is going to happen uh, is that, that indeed 
in most people's minds, including um, our, our uh, consultant from UTIL, these are connected projects. And that implicitly in this, um, in this Stimson design is a building at the back end of the Pulaski Park. It says it actually right here in the letter. Uh, so it's concerning to me if UTIL says that we need further study of regarding a building because then the Stimson design looks a little different com com in, the, in the minds of the consultants. But I do believe that implicit in this plan uh, is, a, uh, is development of the roundhouse lot. Uh, and um, I voted for it last time because um, because uh, you're, you're showing leadership and uh, it's something you believe in and um, I'm, uh, I'm willing to follow that. But that's, but you're buying, you're, you're owning this uh, and- uh, Most definitely. And uh, that's, uh, that's why I'm, I'm supporting. Thank you. So, um, Councilor Tacey, if you don't mind, Councilor Adams has not spoken yet, so. Okay. I, I want to move to recognize um, Fran Walker. Second. There's a motion been made and seconded by, uh, to recognize former Councilor Fran Volkman. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Fran? Um, Jesse? Um, well, I, three minutes isn't always enough sometimes to, to uh, say everything you want to say. So I, I want to know if you want to comment further on your concerns. Thank you. I'd love to. Um, could I say at the beginning that in no way do I think that anything has been being done behind the scenes or, or under any kind of cover or anything like that? In no way do I think that. In fact, I would like to take some credit for the very wonderful open process that the Community Preservation Committee uses in evaluating its, uh, its proposals. I, I was there for its first four years. Um, so th this, is not, this is certainly not to blame anybody. It's the last thing I would want to do. It's also not to slow down a process or throw a cog in the wheel or whatever that you're supposed to say. Um, what seems to me to be happening is that we've got some processes going on that are in parallel to each other but not, not having much crosstalk. So there's been a process for, for Pulaski Park going on for years. And I think that was probably a really good process. You know. We've just begun a process about the roundhouse lot that has been very hopeful. It's, it's actually, people were very pleased with that October 1st meeting when we came and, and uh, Tim Love talked to us about this and got input from all of us. But in that discussion, and some of you were there so you can refute this or back me up or whatever, the whole process was always, it seemed to me, to be a single thing. The park was part of the roundhouse lot development. It was all a unitary. When you looked at the slides that were thrown right up there on the wall, uh, it was all part of the slides. So a lot of the people in the room, and the people certainly that I've talked to, have believed all along that this was a, a unitary pro project. Uh, while the people who were doing <coughs> Pulaski Park, it uh, didn't come up. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it came up. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. But there was, there was not, there wasn't crosstalk between the two groups. So now one group is feeling like the, the group that has, believes that it's important for this to be a unitary process hasn't been here hasn't been heard in any straightforward way. The group that thinks it could be divided has been heard. And I would simply like to try to bring this conversation together so that everybody can move forward. That's all I want to do. I don't want to keep something from happening. Uh, I mean, it might delay it for three or four months. That could happen. It's been delayed already for, what, a couple of decades, I mean, you know, it couldn't do that. 
but I think there's a lot to be gained by sitting down and working this through and saying, how can we make this work? What are the, what's the time frame? What should we do now? What should we wait? How can we listen this through and come together and make it work? Because I'm sure it can work. Sure it can work. Uh, that's, that's what I want to say. Uh, Councilor Tacey mm. was next. Uh, actually, Councilor Specter has not yeah. spoken already? Yeah. yeah, but so is Councilor Tacey. Okay. So, so uh, Councilor Tacey uh, was next. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I'm, done, but I'm not done yet. And uh, Councilor Specter. Okay. Councilor, uh, I do understand the, I think it's logical that the assumption would have been made at the meeting. I wasn't at that meeting, but I was at the meeting before at Edlu when the presentation was made. I think there's something going on that's kind of unfortunate timing. In fact, if UTL had not come back with their study for six or eight more months, we would have just moved ahead if, if the DPW had kept moving ahead with their proposal. These two would have been separated. The fact is both trains made it into the station at about the same time. So the assumption that is very logical that these two were always going to be integrated is very natural. And I wish that Tim had said, which he says you said implicitly is the in, in his discussion, implicit is that the two are together. Well, explicitly, explicitly in the util report is stated in, and in the letter, move forward. Basically, he says, go forward with Pulaski Park. They're basically saying, look, they're, they're knowing, as people who do this all the time, this could be a very, very long process. So one thing I would like to say is I don't see what would come even two, three, four months down the road. What would be something that would then change this? Would it be if the outcome is, okay, we're going to go ahead with Pulaski Park, or the outcome is, no, we're going to then wait on Pulaski Park and go through a, which won't just be four months. I think it could be many more years of looking at how do we do the two together Unless there's going to be some different outcome, process just for process sake, uh, I mean, I hear you, but I don't really see what the difference would be. And again, I want to go back to, I wish the timing had just been different. I wish it was a year from now and UTL came in and we had the proposal, because I don't think we'd be having the same discussion. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I did address it. Fran, to, to Fran, do you want to respond to that? Sure. Um, you could be right. Um, my sense of it is that ever since we began the discussion of the hotel, um, there has been a, a feeling that the park and the, and the roundhouse lot were integrally related. Um, so I think the timing of the UTL proposal is probably not that critical. But you, you could be right. I, I just have some informational questions. Yeah. Part, one, of, one of the features in both of these things is that the park is owned by the city, and the city has authority and primacy over that property. And to the extent that the roundhouse lot, we do, but we don't have the means, nor do we have the intention of building whatever building that is. We're just developing an RFP for that. So that, when an RFP, of course, as we all know, is essentially our best wishes expressed and hope that a developer will come. Uh, the likelihood of that happening is, I would say, less likely than if we all get together and we convene and advance our best hopes and wishes on Pulaski Park. We certainly have more authority over, over what happens in that respect. And my, my concern is if we develop an RFP, RFPs are naturally restrictive and, and, and there's some gun-shy issues that come with that, so developers, it'd have to be a pretty special developer that would come. And I haven't heard of any in the offing, but I'm not in the loop. But my concern is resting our hopes on whatever is to become a Pulaski Park on the prospect and the wishful hopes about something that we may never realize, or certainly not realize on our own timeline. We have control of the timeline on this one, and certainly less so there. And I'm con I would take your question that, or your question that you asked the mayor, what happens, what are the horrible things that happen if we move forward with these monies to expand and increase the study? And, and I'll, I'll, I'm, asking, I'm asking Fran if she has some thoughts on that. But the, um, as we continue and expand the conversation, and presumably without the exclusion of the discussion of the prospect of a building, 
I think we're doing two things here right now. One is we're talking about a process, and the other is we're talking about the content. And I want to have one more meeting in which everybody's at the table to talk about the content. That's, that's all I'm asking for. But in, I, so I you mean, don't you think could, it's precluded you, by this, uh, could, the authorization of these funds? I'm sorry? Do you think that prospect of that discussion is precluded by authorizing these funds? I think there will be a perception that, this, that we've moved forward without hearing the arguments for an integrated project. You know, you may be right about the content. Uh, I don't know what the right outcome is about the content. And I don't, I don't think we should do process just for process. I think we should do good process. And I think good process means that at, you get, at a, for a very specific question like this, you simply get people to the table. And then you can work it through and go forward. Um, Councilor Carney has not spoken yet. Thank you, uh, you Councilor, for um, all your work on this. Um, I was just going back the four years or five years to when <clears throat> when we had the uh, the hotel development disintegrate, the whole proposal <laughs> completely disintegrate at, at, at the council level after many, many, many months or years of work on that. And I, it seemed to me that at that time, um, what was considered uh, you know, the Pulaski Park development was considered to be a, a byproduct of that of that hotel development, and that was one of the um, criticisms that got levied against the city for really making the park secondary in some in some respects to the development of the hotel. Um, it was clear after public outcry at the time that um, that this was not going to go forward, and the council at that point rejected the funding of the proposal. It also seemed clear to me that those two projects got separated, especially since, um, you know, an RFP was then put out by the Board of Public Works, when it seemed as though there wasn't a ready development for, that, for the roundhouse lot, there was at the same time enough of a commitment that we do need to do something about Pulaski Park. So it's hard for me to understand, given that the Board of Public Works put out the RFP and the committee was formed and the proposals were uh, submitted, that there wasn't, that, that the perception would continue that those two were integrally linked. When everything went forward and it is still, and now we're at the very last, uh, very last step of that. So it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand why there is a continued strong perception and surprise even that that the park development may still be going forward at this point and so uh, while I understand there may be some disappointment and some disagreement and some perception that it may be um, still in the best interest to link those two together you know I, I, I and I and I understand all that I, I'm inclined to go ahead and and um, fund the the project that the CPA recommended to us and still have a conversation about how, as the mayor suggested, there may be continued some sort of synthesis, as even the URTL report suggests that, you know, why lose the momentum of the project that we've already, um, that the, all this work has been done, and, and continue doing the work for the roundhouse lot. So I, uh, respectfully, I, you know, I do understand where you're coming from. I just don't know that there's much to be gained by delaying this vote. And instead, I would, I would suggest that we go, move forward with this vote and still bring people to the table and see how we can, you know, continue. Because I, I think that the option is there still to find what ways we can link these projects. is still there it really rests on that October 1st meeting where it was so clear that they were linked <laughs> and 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 okay uh, you can respond to that in yes um, do you want me to stop and no no yeah, okay. no you continue um, with your point and then 
However, however, we all, we all come to this with our histories, uh, and our histories are a little different, and that's why, that's why we pay you guys the big bucks. <laughs> you have to make this judgment. You have to make the judgment about whether the best thing to do is to go ahead now and, and maybe try to build a process, as you're talking about, uh, or whether to, to do one more step before you take that step. I understand that that's a difficult decision for you, or maybe not, uh, and that you have to make it, and I certainly will respect whatever decision you make. Uh, I'm here to say that I hope that the process goes forward in a way that works for everybody, because down the road, it will be critical that that be the case. But um, I'm not going to fight this to the bitter end. I wanted you to hear it, um, and I appreciate your listening. Thank you, friend. Uh, Your Honor, you want to you want to speak to this? And I do. Okay. Uh, and Downey, you you you're already recognized, so you will have an opportunity. I just want to correct one uh, uh, one persistent uh, statement that at uh, the October hearing that the UTL presented this unified design for the park and and uh, and what was happening in, in the roundhouse when. Util was hired, and Tim Love came, and they basically went to our website and downloaded every document they could find about the park, the history. I mean, about the the, the lot, the history, et cetera. And they found that there had been this Stimson-approved um, schematic that the DPW had, um, and was moving forward on a process from. So when they put Pulaski, when they bid the schematic, they just used the DPW's approved schematic that's been hanging in their boardroom for the last uh, five years. Um, and they, they superimposed that on the park just to kind of give a realistic look of what it would look like. So it was not, UTL was not presenting a unified design of the park. They basically took the, the, you know, the design that's been sitting in the DPW boardroom for the f past five years waiting for funding, and they just superimposed it there as a picture. In terms of the, in terms of the two processes, um, I'm, the, I'm the lead, I'm the applicant for the Pulaski Park Project. I'm, you know, with the DPW, uh, am you know helping to lead that project I'm helping to lead this project so that the idea that there's these two groups that are like walking around in the desert and not understanding who they are um, I, I can assure you that there's a lot of coordination on this issue between the two so I guess I would just want to address those two uh, perhaps misconceptions and Downey you wanted to speak to this um, yeah just in terms of process um, I think the Council is aware that when this application came to us in the first round of 2013, that we turned it down. And one of the reasons that we turned it down is we were not satisfied with the presentation, especially in terms of this is a central location which will interface with not just the roundhouse lot, but a significant consideration is the crosswalk, where a fatality occurred not long ago, and the redesign and potential reconstruction of that crosswalk is in process. A member of, uh, Deb Bruce is a member of the Planning Commission. She sits on the Community uh, Preservation Committee exactly because of her specialized knowledge of these matters, as well as there was in the previous round an uh, application for a pocket park in front of City Hall. Uh, there was a design charrette about redesigning Main Street and reconfiguring Main Street. So we were well aware of how complex this was, and we were not comfortable with the first application. We were also not comfortable that in the first round that we didn't know where the buck stopped. And that was very important to us because we wanted to, if we were recommending to you to make this grant, that there was one person who was on the seat. And as you just said, the mayor is pretty clearly here, and he did so repeatedly uh, this round for this application, say, you can look to me. I will stand behind this project. Um, we were still not satisfied. And so in our contract conditions that we just voted on last night, we set that we want the Department of Public Works to come back to us, the, either the chair or the, um, or the designee, to come back to us and report before the schematic design is finished on where they have gotten with the design so that we can ask questions to make sure that it satisfies us as to the, you know, the interactions with all of the surrounding properties. Now, we won't have decision-making authority at that point, but certainly if we're asking questions and we're not getting satisfactory answers, we would hope that that would be something that 
we would bring to your attention or that the press would bring to your attention and that might slow the project down at that point. Um, I just think it's really important that this process has gone on for a year. Central Business Architecture Committee, I just checked November 27, 2007, yep. so more than six years ago. Now, we're all old people, so our time horizons are stretch out, but I work with kids and, you know, for kids, that's half of their lifetime in Northampton. If we wait another six years, my kids will be gone. And, you know, when we went to the Nutcracker the other night and we went to the beautiful Academy of Music and then there was this dark sort of foreboding space here, um, that's their only memory if we wait another five, six years. So I think it's, it would be time to move forward. And again, it's been said that we want the park to be there and drive the development around it. You know, you build Central Park first. Central Park was there long before there was any development in Central Manhattan. And it guided the development around it. And I think that's the model to go. Not say, we'll build a building with an amenity out front. Council Schwartz, you actually had your hand up and you were in the queue. And it's been a while. And, and I know yeah. Council I mean, Jason, I, I do feel like it's been thoroughly debated. I'm just very strongly in support of the proposal. And I think it's everything. All the comments that have been said around the why um, in support of it, I, I would just echo. So. Councilor Tacy has been very patient and waited, and you are, you are now up. Right. Oh, the debt is also about on transportation and parking. Mm -hmm. What great input also in this this whole process. This, if when the hotel failed, if we had moved forward with the park. It didn't happen. We had all kinds of design work and everything, and it just it didn't happen. We're now, so now we're at a point, as Councilor uh, Spector has just said, we've got two things in front of us right now. We have $194,000 here for design work, and we don't know what a cap would be on the amount of money that we would spend on the park. We haven't got a clue. But this is supposed to be 10%. Design work is supposed to be 10% of the cost of the construction project. That's the rule of thumb. And I, and I am a big supporter of fixing this park. The park is a wreck. I mean, this is a place that I grew up in, and, and I agree with you. Five or seven years down the line from now, how the kids that are in the park now are going to be gone. You know, it, it goes that quickly. I can talk about the guy being the principal at, at the Florence Grammar School 35 years ago. But that's not for a kid. But I don't see what waiting until the second meeting of January to vote on this. Six of the nine councils that are sitting here now are still going to be here. So I would, make, I, I would make a motion that we postpone this until the second meeting of January. And I don't see what the downside is to it. I know we've heard about what, what will the upside be or the downside. I don't see where it's going to make any difference in a couple of months. Um, just for a point of information, we only have one meeting in January that would be um, January 7th. So no, organizational, the organizational meeting, yeah. It, so it won't be, uh, that's the only item on the agenda. January 19th. Uh, Councilor Murphy. I'd like to move this question before we spend as much time talking about it tonight as we have waiting to fix this part. There's another motion on the floor. There's, there's another there's motion, motion, motion on the floor. There's another motion on the floor. Was that a motion to table? Yes. A motion to table to the second meeting in January. No. Well, there, there's no. not a second yet. You have the organizational on the 7th. You have a regular right, I'm on sorry. the 16th. Okay. So the next the next meeting on the sixteenth. We're waiting for a second, I think. Yes, yeah. second. There's a second. For purposes of discussion. For purposes of discussion. No. It's a motion to vote. Table. Sure. No, yeah. It is the yeah. So so, councilor, I, I understand your um, motivation, but I, I actually don't think that um, the, this council has the power to table uh, a this uh, this until any time certain because. Uh, this council won't exist next in, in in January. I think instead we have to carry this over. We would have to carry this over instead of second or meeting in January. Over. I think it just has to be carried over. Carried, carried over. over. Carried, carried over. over. Motion. Carried over. I, I'll carry. I'll over. withdraw my motion and make a motion to carry it over to the next council. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that for purposes of discussion. Okay. And discussing the carryover. Uh, a point of vote. information. Sure. Um, okay. So if that if the motion that's on the floor now to carry over is defeated, does that allow us still to mo vote on mm -hmm. the motion yes. tonight? Yes. yes, it does. And we go back to the original. Yeah. Motion. 
Okay. Councilor Freeman Dam. You, you also, I was uh, included in that question about the, the upshot of waiting. Um, and my question is what's the harm of waiting? Uh, and I don't think, I, I think most, most of the counselors have spoken. Their mind. They see the harm in waiting is in the waiting. Um, so your question about what the upshot of waiting is. Uh, and I, I think uh, Councilor Volkman uh, makes a good point. And, um, and I think that that's a kind of a, it's, it's also answering a question with a question, but it's a little bit different. The upshot of waiting is exactly the distinction she made between process and content, right? The upshot of waiting is it gives you a chance to see what kind of content emerges. And so the, uh, the upshot is that, that uh, and uh, let's just, I mean, I, I sat on Ed Lou and was at the UTL presentation, which I, uh, many community members were at, the mayor was at, um, Councilor Spector was out of town, so I had to chair it, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but um, you did let, well too. let's be clear, the util, the, the initial util design, three of the four of them had, uh, the, had a building with a layout that cut into the park, that actually cut a piece of Pulaski Park off. Now, it happened to be a piece that no one really cares about, no one really notices. I'm, 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 not, I'm not joking. Uh, and, and in fact, it wasn't really, it wasn't in almost all the designs of the park. They kind of ended before that area because they all, that it's kind of treated as a dead space, a no man's land, an area that, that no one really recreates in. Um, so and that's the upshot is that that area, that, that area that no one really recreates in, that dead area, that space that the mayor des that described that we all can kind of picture in our mind but no one really remembers very well, could actually be used uh, fortuitously uh, if we decided to keep, to put the projects together. So that's the upshot or the potential upshot. But I, I concur with Councilor Volkman. We don't know. We don't know what the upshot is. We know the downside of waiting is just waiting and to, we're apparently going to lose momentum because I, I do sense there's a lot of momentum here. Um, but, uh, but I am encouraged by uh, Councillor Volkman um, and uh, Mr. Simpson and um, Mr. Meyer, Ch Chairman Meyer, is that right? Right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, uh, that there will be a process that will take place regarding the park that will be, um, that will be uh, funded by this money um, and I think that uh, the, um, I think it's important not to lose sight of the Roundhouse project while the Pulaski project is taking place. And that is really important to, to not lose sight of that. And it's real, I think it's important not to defer that. I saw in the mayor's comments today, uh, well, I think it might have been today, that the mayor doesn't anticipate that the ad hoc committee will meet until, uh, was that March? March. February. February, okay. I think, I think it should be a little earlier than that. I think the ad hoc committee should meet as, as soon as possible, which, means that, which means that I think Ed Lou yeah. needs to convene pretty quickly um, a, a, in January. Um, it's not gonna happen. And uh, so I, I do think that, I do think that uh, we, we can go forward with this, um, postponing it, for till January is probably not going to accomplish much. Um, and so I, I think that we need to, but we do need to keep a tab on the process and keep them both together. Councilor Carney. Oh, okay, I think I understand now that the second, or the second to the motion is not in favor of the motion, but it, I had some questions about the timing because if we're talking about the January 16th meeting, just from everything I've heard, we're talking about needing to do all of the, con needing to convene that ad hoc committee. And uh, again, I mean, maybe this gets to Council of Oakland, but um, is that even, would that even satisfy? Would January 16th satisfy? It seems as though what we're hearing is um, even January 16th would not be enough time. We're talking about going into February in order to satisfy what the arguments are. So uh, again, I'm not, I'm inclined to move forward at least with the funding and then convening a, a way to
to discuss the possible syntheses of these projects. This is a discussion on the motion. And the motion is to roll over until uh, January, 16th. January 16th. So are there any other, for Mary? Can I just make a clarification? You don't have an ad, ad hoc committee having a meeting before ADLU is formed. Your committees are not going to be formed until the council president elected at the January 7th meeting picks who's going to be on the committees and announces them at the January 16th meeting. So That's you right. won't have meetings in January of committees. Uh, uh, Councilor Pacey. Can I amend my motion to the first meeting in February? I mean, it's, I, I fail to see the, 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 the problem with waiting. We're in the middle of the winter. I fail to see the problem in waiting a month or two on this just to allow. It's, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. Well, hang on a second. Everyone, this is order on the motion. You're changing your motion. Is there a second to the change? Because I'll second it for sake of discussion. Uh, for the purposes of okay. discussion, council respect. Okay. We keep hearing what's the harm. We could say that about 90% of the issues that come forward as if we haven't looked at this. And so I think it was important to go back to say the CPC committee looked at this, had vibrant discussion about it, even rejected it, looked at it in terms of an RFP that was potential. They didn't look at it just in a vacuum. We have looked at this. One of my concerns is we have a third of the council turning over of people who are brand new, some of whom may have no idea about this. So you could say that about a lot of things. What's the harm? We could have done that on a lot of issues, time after time. I don't see any value. What I was asking, and I made that statement about process for process sake, I don't see anything that comes out of that one meeting. I really don't. I, I hear, and I respect Council, uh, uh, Fran Volkman's comments, that people will feel a little better, that they've been heard. I actually think it, there is a downside to that. If you have a meeting where they're, you're just doing it so people feel hurt and they think they're going to have power over a change, I don't see what would actually come of it in terms of what we would change. If this council is ready to vote on this and move this forward, I would say vote on it tonight. I really don't see any benefit in waiting. And as we're seeing, it won't just, it'll be a couple of months, I think. I think the mayor was correct. To move this forward would be a number of months of waiting. And I see no benefit in doing that. So I'd like to move the question, if possible, on whether we. Well, Con Council Murphy, you to, to the uh, question. Well, I, that was what I was going to say is, I, while the rhetoric's been very exciting, <laughs> I think we all know how we're going to vote on the amendment or the, the motion to continue. Yeah. And I think we all know how we're going to vote on the question itself. So I might suggest we just vote on both and move on. Move it. Are you, are you calling the question? I am. Uh, on the amendment. On the amendment. The amendment. On the amendment and, and then shortly thereafter the main question because I think we'll see we all know how we're going to vote on both of them. This is on, this is on <laughs> the, uh, the motion to roll this over to uh, now the first meeting in February. <laughs> all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Nay. Nay. Um, Mr. President? Yes. When you're elected to the next council's presidency, you do not <laughs> have to wait until the, six, the next, the second meeting to announce well, the chair. The council president has the right and the ability to make appointments previous to that meeting. And doesn't, they don't have to, they can appoint a uh, that the meetings can be convened in January if, ne if necessary. That's, that is true. Thank yes. you. Yes. That, that would have been more appropriate point to make before the motion was voted. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, be called, but yeah. 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 so fair enough. All right. Call the question. Uh, the question is now called about the authorization of the uh, approving of these uh, allocated funds from the CPA. Uh, I'm going to ask for roll call, please. Could you repeat that again? What are we for? We're now voting to author. Do you want me to read the order? No. Oh. This is this is we're voting. This is that we're voting on the question of authorizing the amount of uh, $194,500 in CPA funds to be used for the design of Pulaski Park. Yes vote means it is approved. No vote means you disapprove. And also, before we vote, and we can give our reasons why we're voting yes or no. We can do that now. The question's called. The, the question's called, so the opportunity for further debate is ended. So. Um, if it's important that you go on the record as to why you're voting for okay. something, um, 
I, I think we can probably make an allowance, but I, I'd hate to set precedent because we would die of old age <laughs> in some cases, but as people take an opportunity well, to do I that. I think when somebody's going to go ahead and vote on something, I think you do have the rights to go ahead and say why you're voting yes or no. Point of, uh, point of order, mm -hmm. the council doesn't have to call the question right now. Yeah. Right. We can vote against the question being called. If yeah. we can, yeah, okay. The, um, all right, how about this? The motion to <laughs> call the question, we're going to vote on the motion yes. to call the question. Yeah. Fine. All those in favor of calling the question, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. All right, it passes. And then, therefore, you're, it's a simple yay, nay, or abstention vote on this roll call then, with no expansion. So, so please call the roll. For the original motion. For the original motion. Unamended. Professor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Tacey? Elbstein. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Yes. The motion passes in second reading. Can we call recess? Um, there's been a request for recess, and we will recess for five, seven minutes, convening the the meeting. And right now, this is upon the recommendation of the Community Preservation Committee. This is the financial order. Uh, for the appropriation of $170,000 from the Community Preservation Act funding, excuse me, to Northampton Conservation Commission for the Sawmills, uh, Sawmill Hills Open Space Acquisition. Motor proof. Second. A second. Any discussion on this one? Yeah. We've lost several of Valley, so I should, should be right. to this. I'm going to vote uh, no on this until after uh, their management plan. I, that's what I, the yeah, assessment in place, I would vote yes on it, but I'm going to vote in place and uh, I'll leave that to uh, Alyssa who will be taking my spot okay any other discussion on this uh, please call the roll Councilor Schwartz yes Councilor Spector yes Councilor Adams yes Councilor Carney yes Councilor Dwight yes Councilor Freeman Daniel aye Councilor Labar yes Councilor Murphy yes Okay. Um, Can we take the next two together? You want to take the next two are the order, the warrant to restrain dogs and the warrant to catch and confine dogs. Uh, and this is second reading. So the motions were made for the first two. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, roll call. These are oh, I'm sorry. These I'm sorry. Orders. Yeah, these are orders. I'm sorry. I'm just now I'm stuck in that mode. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, dogs, watch it. Um, as you all know, and you probably still have in your records, this is the <clears throat> item number three is to adopt the council committees that were proposed uh, upon the recommendation of Councilor Jesse Adams. <laughs> Right, and and actually to that point, actually I would ask uh, Councilor Adams to talk to that issue. But this is a recommendation from the City Solicitor relative, relative to the Finance Committee, and I, I'm sorry if I caught you up short. No, no, that, that's fine. And this um, one moved, right? we moved it as amended. This is the uh, uh, so you're moved. Comfortable making the motion for it. So moved as amended. Okay. Yeah. As amended. Second. All right. So then we can discuss it. And we can discuss it. Um, well, well, as far as as far as finance, um, basically, uh, Solicitor Seawalt's amended it so that um, basically council only controls property, and um, he and, and 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 he eliminated some of the language um, to 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 make the the new finance committee more consistent with the charter. He also eliminated some of the functions that the that the committee doesn't perform mm -hmm. um, that are that are antiquated and and I made some small recommendations that 
that um, we we allow them to continue to have the power to do um, certain reviews, for example, of the auditor and the books. I mean, it said that they shall before, which ordered them to do so, which doesn't happen. So we so we changed it. So basically, switched shall to may, um, so that they still have that that power if they chose to use it. Um, but I think that was th the solicitor's intent was just to mm -hmm. was just to um, make those small changes, just make make these consistent with the, with the new charge. And maybe I think it was just again the separation of administrative versus legislative activities for bonding and things of that nature. Just cleaned it up so that it matched the charter better. It's it was one of the artifacts that, that was outstanding. Which is the purpose of this. Uh, also, one, some of the proposals he. Uh, You'll recall Councilor Freeman Daniels is suggesting a 22-9 and 22-10 remain because essentially they were conference committees. It was the elimination. Mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. That's separate. That's separate. That's a separate, separate, a separate order. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, could you, I'm sorry. Go on. I'd like to recommend a, um, a very small friendly amendment in, in the solicitors um, in this new amended A2. Um, there's just another may that should be in my opinion a shall that should be a may and that's that would that would be in the fifth sentence so that it would an a2 yeah um the finance committee and auditor may also at the close of each fiscal year examine all notes etc um because again that's just we don't want the finance committee to be ordered right to that second as a matter of practice that doesn't occur okay so the, that amendment's uh, been made and seconded. Do you see where that's at, Mary? Okay. So on, on the amended language, um, part two and part three have been struck, and now part four is part two, and, and part five has also been struck. Um, on the on the finance committee amendment proposed by the city solicitor, mm -hmm. so we're moving it as a yeah. All right. Any further discussion on this? As, uh, are we accepting the? Are we voting on the amendment, or are we just moving it as um, amended? Moving it. We were doing it as amended, but we can vote on the amendment if you like. Or was that friendly? Was that friendly with the seconder? I think we should vote on Jesse's yeah. amendment. Oh, and Jesse's amendment? Uh, on Councillor Adams' amendment. Okay. Uh, Councillor Adams, but uh, okay. I, I was taking a Scrivener's, but we could. Okay. Um, but all those in favor of changing the word from shall to may in item, in section two, fourth sentence, I think, was the fourth sentence? Mm -hmm. uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Councillor Freeman, down. Just about the main motion. Um, this doesn't, even though it, it, uh, reorganizes finance it doesn't take away the council's power over property it just means that the pr council needs to delegate its authority over property in a manner that's consistent with the rules and so on right and also signing authority on leases and the well right i mean the, the elements that are executive yeah indeed will be executive but the council's authority over property it will not be eliminated by eliminating it from this exactly the oversight the oversight's just more clearly defined here and it's mm -hmm inappropriate uh, all right to the main question all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed <laughs> okay it's the last meeting we're getting we're it's so, um, <clears throat> excuse me um, this is amending 22 dash 2 through 22-8 in the council committees, and this is also in second reading. So that's to delete second them. It. I'm sorry? That's to delete them. That's yeah. to, to delete them, Del correct. Yeah. So, so, so I move. Moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, it is an ordinance, yes. Now we're back to roll call. Roll call, please. Inspector? Yes. Councilor Tazy? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor Marshall? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Okay. Now comes the really controversial one that's actually made headlines. Um, the unestablishment? The, yes, yes. This is the unestablishment. This is uh, separated out. This is um, 
This is. <coughs> Okay. Okay, the city solicitor is recommending that we delete in its entirety um, the establishing the appointment of a town crier. Um, and so. I'll accept a motion to put that so on the board. Second it. Okay. Mr. President. Discussion. Um, I think there's there's um, section 105-1, which the solicitor is suggesting we delete in its entirety, but. There's also 1052, 1053, and 1054, which all relate to the town uh, crier. So I'd like to um, amend this uh, this ordinance to include deleting in its entirety 1052, 1053, and 1054. I've got copies right here. Second. Second. There's a second on that. Thank you. So I move we vote on that the amendment. Uh, on on the yeah okay all those in favor of the amendment. Aye. 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 Opposed? Isn't there two readings on that? Um, this will require two readings in order to uh, put mm -hmm. the issue to bed. So call yeah. the question on the first reading. Second it. Uh, the question's been called. <laughs> no debate? <laughs> this is kind of terrifying. All right. Yes. All right. Well, first, we have to vote it. Let's we have the reading. question. Yeah. First reading. Yeah. So uh, actually, all those in favor of calling the question? Aye. 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 Uh, this is on first reading. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Tacey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Suspend rule 14. Second. There's a motion made and seconded to suspend rules. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Let's accept a motion for the second reading. Second. Discussion? Mr. President, I see nowhere here that require the town crier to wear knickers, a tri-corner hat, or a puffy shirt. <laughs> uh, well, fortunately, we won't have to delete that because there will be no... <laughs> so you're saying there's no costume for a, a position that doesn't exist. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> One more roll call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one more, that's true. It's rendered moot, actually, in just a moment. Um, roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Lavar? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Speck? Yes. Councilor Tacey? Yes. All right. Next motion is for the town crybaby. We've got, we're getting there. This is 22.1 through 22.11. This is commissions and committees of the council. This is tabled from December 5th. This will require two readings in order to finish up the business. Is there a motion to put it on the floor? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. President, has this been amended by the solicitor? Uh, Yes. The, what we're seeing is the rep, uh, represents his. Yes, because the motion last meeting was to take out the. That's number seven. Right to to remove the the, the conference commission. in public works and joint. So there are other sections. Yeah, we just got rid of the town crier. So if you look, it it, it, it okay. Councilor Freeman Daniels, if you'll notice that it retains twenty two nine and twenty two ten. This is as amended. The conference amended. committees. Yeah. The conference committees that, uh, that your request and reasonable request and the solicitor <laughs> that we retain those two. So is there any further discussion on this as amended? No. Um, roll call, please. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Schwartz? Yes. Councillor Spencer? Aye. Councillor Tacey? Yes. Councillor Adams? Yes. I'll accept a motion to suspend rules. So moved. Second. All those in favor of suspending Aye. rules? Aye. 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 Move second reading. Second reading is made and is it seconded? Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call on this Councilor one. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Councillor Schwartz? 
Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Pinky. Yes. Councilor Adam. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. This is the coming up is the committee on hearings, investigations, and practices. This is also in second. Move to approve. As amended. As amended. The solicitor did this one too. So. Okay. Yeah, the solicitor has a recommendation. In my opinion, City Council may delegate its fact finding function to a committee and therefore the committee may re require a me the member the a member the member of an MMB or city employee to appear however the sentence uh, in section a2 reading the committee may require information from any city agency should be deleted that provision exceeds the CC authority under 2-7 of the charter. that is his recommendation on amending this mm -hmm. um, it's it as amended the motion is, uh, is there a motion to put it on the floor as amended? Yeah, that, that's been moved. Uh, right. But as amended. Yeah, as amended. Okay. All right, and discussion. Uh, just as, as I understand from our discussion at the last meeting, this was to be understood as an ad hoc committee to the... Um, uh, no, not an actual ad hoc, but, but in, in... Function as an ad hoc. Function as an ad hoc with no permanent committee, uh, no permanent members. It was recommended no permanent members be assigned. Right. Um, this would be at the prerogative actually, there of the was president. another suggestion I heard that a chair should be assigned, but possibly that's subject for discussion as well. But the that no that the members can be appointed as per their area of interest or expertise, depending on the issue that they investigate. investigate so. At the prerogative of the president. Yeah. At the prerogative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can Council I Murphy. just I, I have a suggestion. Um, this was Councilor Murphy's idea, and I thought it was elegant, but I do think we. You sh the president should assign a chair because it's if you don't then no one calls the meetings and <laughs> so on and so forth so i think you should have a chair that's a permanent chair or something like that um or at least the someone who's designated as the chair regularly so that they can call the meetings and they can make the agendas and so on and so forth uh, you do you want to make that as no I, uh, no because it's at your it's at the president's it's discretion right, really yeah. so, yeah, okay can i also s say um i i think Deleting that sentence doesn't affect the body of the of the uh, committee too much, but I, I um, I'll just read verbatim from the charter, section 27A. The city council may make investigations into the affairs of the city and into the conduct and performance of any city agency. Sure. So I, I, we can delete it, but I, I don't know. I, I think it Mr. doesn't Mr. exceed the yes. Right. Right. The issue is any information. Right. Uh, yeah. That was probably the solicitor. Mm -hmm. Like private employee records of uh, yeah, personnel and would not have access to it. And shouldn't have. No. Not through executive session or anything? Uh, well, if you did, um, the employee and their lawyer would have to be there and there'd have to be some, you'd, you'd have to be the supervisor of that particular employee. I don't know that you could actually um, do that. So I think would, so. I think his concern was just the word "any information" because that would be exceeding. Um, there are there are there is some information that um, that I can't disclose with with anyone, including the city council. So, Councilor Adams, you had a question. Well, it doesn't read any information, though. I mean, I thought your I thought I thought what was in there was the concern. no. The any doesn't modify the information. It, it, it said uh, the the committee may require information from any city agency. I right. I just. Yeah. Any. Uh, it's, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. relevantly affect it, but I, I I'm curious what the solicitor thinks when I'm just the charter verbatim says that the city council can make investigations into the affairs and conduct and performance of any yeah, city. I mean, I in my opinion, I mean, I, I certainly of course we can't request information that's illegal for us to have. Yeah. But, but he took it almost verbatim from the charter itself. So. But it, it, I, it, look, let's just. You know, just delete the line and mm -hmm. okay. call it a night. I disagree with you. Okay. Well, I can't uh, speak for that. I, I, I wasn't aware of this edit, so I was just trying to surmise what he might have been. So we can you can vote on the amendment. I'm just play a lawyer. Actually, no, it's amended. amended. It's amended. It's amended. Moved it as amended. Do it as it is. Just, yeah, it's fine. It's kind of curious. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this? Uh, please call the roll. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Aye. Council Labar? Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Spencer? Yes. Council Hazard? Yes. Council Adams? Yes. Council Carney? Yes. Council Boyle? Yes. Do 8 through 22 as a group. So there is a request to move 8 through 22 as a group. Yeah. Yes. 
We do. We don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to move the whole agenda. <laughs> it's okay, that's true. You did. You were coming out of recess. You wanted to move the whole agenda. <laughs> um, so the motion is eight through twenty-two to be put on the floor. Was it seconded? So I, I seconded. Okay. Any discussion on these items? None. Bingo. Yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Casey? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Kramer? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Dan. Aye. Move this. Come. Move this to Federal 14 for a second reading. They're all second They're all reading. All second readings. Oh, they They're were all second readings. I thought I wanted to. Okay. No, no, we're done. We wouldn't have been able to move them. Oh, the, so, yeah. Um, now we come up to the point where we're talking about this is also cleaning up of so the items that need to be carried over, and there's one additional one on this um, that we have to include before, um, and that would be the um, proposal from Councillor Carney, the resolution for um, vibrant uh, sidewalk. Uh, so that was actually a multi-councillor. Uh, right, sponsor I was one of the sponsors as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, four, I think. Yeah. Four of us. Mr. President, can we yeah. can we um, put this item on the agenda right before adjournment? Which item is that? This discussion and vote. Could we move that below the updates, information requests, and new business, please? Um, sure. Thank you. Sure. This is a typical end of council session that you have to do this. I, yeah, he would just want to move it to the end of the agenda, yeah. which um, is there any objection to moving it to the end of the agenda? No. Uh, the, well, the, it does beg the obvious yeah. question. So. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead. Do you want to? You want to explain? <laughs> yeah. Um, if uh, if we vote on this now, and there's new business, we'd have to vote on that new business to be carried over. So this essentially is would be two items. We'd, we'd have to vote on items to be carried over twice: once here, and then once in new business. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, I have new business. I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> but before before we get to new business, there's an information request. Oh yeah, I have new business. All right. Um, this has to do with the recent payroll impropriety issue in North the Police Department. And um, today, I had a very good conversation about the matter with the mayor, and and afterwards. A very good con uh, conversation with Councillor Labarge, and um, and I just had our, my, our conversation, my conversation, with Councillor Labarge. We had just some some questions remaining, and, and a lot of the questions are are have have to do with just you know factual factual questions, w um, which the answers to may be out there. I think they may be, and hopefully readily available. Um, I'll give one example. Um, how much was the cost of the investigation, and um, and how much will the city be reimbursed for the investigation, which I believe will be entirely. So, um, but I, I did have numerous questions, and I and I and I and, and and for anyone who's wondering what the purpose of it is, I wrote I wrote a preamble, a very brief preamble, and um, and I quoted the charter, the section section two seven, which which gives us the the ability to make these requests, and. Um, and, and, and states exactly what the authority is. And we have the authority to ask um, these sorts of questions on any municipal matter. And um, again, I think th these, are, these are just, these are questions relating, I'm, I'm looking for certain data, which, which again, I think will be readily available. And um, certain questions regarding policies, um, including questions about the policies of, of the, the use of um, the, the payroll systems, for example. So um, this would be my information request. Thank number, you. Number 21 seems to be incomplete. Oh, that got left out. Thank you. Um, kind of relevant. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know, I, I added that somewhere else. That can be, I'm sorry, 21 can be deleted. That got merged into another. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. So I have a second sheet. Do we move this? I, I uh, is a request from any, oh, any council has the right to ask for so, request information. So it's a request. So it's done. Yeah. Right. It's done. So yeah. Please vote on it. My question. Yeah. Do you have to vote? Yeah. Yeah. Do we vote on it? No, it does. It takes a vote. It takes a vote. So therefore, it has to be moved. Yeah. I move. 
move the request for information. Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on this? Um, the, uh, I would have some question on some of the relevance on some of these questions, but maybe uh, number 17. Um, the, the, the basis for that question is because there's mandatory retirement. Um, and, I'm, and I'm wondering, that's the basis for that question. I also asked the same thing about, about the former captain of operations, and that has to do with his, the basis for that question has to do with his retirement pension, which I think the taxpayers should, I mean, I don't know if that can be calculated today, but I do think the taxpayers have the right to know what his pension would be when that can be calculated. So, so that's in there as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other questions? So you're voting on this, but eliminating 21. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, number 21 is redundant, so yes, yeah, so you get to delete it. So, uh, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, all right, now to new business. Uh, Mr. President, you remember I had new business, uh, Amend 31236 that I withdrew a couple uh, last month. I've since gone to the Transportation Parking Commission. They've also sponsored it, so I've got new business for next for next session, basically. For next session, okay. So that would be carried over, please. Over the so now we're up to. I don't recall them were sponsoring. We didn't get even a vote. This is what we're doing. This is. Um, this is the relocations of providing meter locations and regulations being ordained by the City of Northampton City Council assembled that section 312-36 code of ordinance. This is essentially you can read authorizing. It. Yeah, I'll read I'll read the amended language. Not um, I'll read the part in italics. How's that? That's fine. That's okay. In the case of repair or replacement of machine parts or infrastructure used in the collection of parking fees, the mayor has the authority to temporarily alter or suspend parking fees in any municipal lot or metered space if it is not practical to collect the established fees due to repair or replacement of parts or infrastructure. Such temporary power shall not be extended uh, beyond the first city council meeting from the time such power is exercised. And the mayor will write a letter to the city council president divulging the reasons for the repairs and the relationship between the repairs and the impracticality of collecting the establishing parking fees and the reason behind the alteration of the fee structure upon the exercise of such temporary power. And that's that's the proposed okay. amendment. And um, there's no discussion on it because it's not on the agenda. Right. We're just... The, it's just we're, rolling we're, it over. We're, it's we're new business that's being introduced to be rolled over to... Four items. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So can we take all... Now we have five items. Can there are we now do? five items. Uh, six, six items. Six, six. six items. The resolution. And the resolution. And the resolution as well. Can we take those as a group to move? The motion is to move all six items as a group over into the next council session. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll accept a motion to adjourn and then we will assemble for a photograph. So we'll Is there a second? Second. All those in favor to adjourn. Aye. 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 Thank you all very, very Aye. much. Thank you. <laughs>